Oh, yeah, curb your enthusiasm. We want to do uh, do a uh, salute to uh, people who have uh, passed away while we were gone away. My favorite guest of all time is Super Dave Osborne. Because he would just call whenever he felt like <laughs> calling, and then whatever happened, happened. And uh, for people who don't know, Super Dave Osborne, Bob Einstein, um, Marty Funkhauser on HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm, uh, he passed away uh, January 2nd, 2019. And so I've been looking when he died, it really, really hit me. As a matter of fact, the, he left me a voicemail, and I'm dying looking for it. I can't find it. But he basically said, when are you getting back on? It's not radio without Johnny B. Call me. He had a joke. Yeah, he because he had to tell a joke. You know, he, he would get on joke. the air, and then he would leave voicemails like this for me. Doesn't it seem like sometime we could talk all day? Thank you. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? He would just leave him. He'd get off the air. I'd get in my car. I'd see my phone. It doesn't seem like sometime we could talk all day. Thank you. He recurred on Curb Your Enthusiasm as Marty Funkhauser, as we said. I guess we should have funeral music for this. All right, because that seems too upbeat right now. So it's Super Day, Bob Einstein. Died January 2nd, 2019. This is the variety uh, obit. He died in Indian Wells, California. He was 76, diagnosed with cancer. And when I heard that, I just like, you know, you know, I see a lot of these celebs dying that we've talked to and whatever, but that one just got me like, wow, super Dave. He seemed too crusty to die. Right. Just a second. Too crusty to die was my third album. <laughs> and I will tell you, people did not enjoy it. Why'd well, you got to bring that up? Um uh, Best known uh, to the Today audience would be playing uh, Marty Funkhauser on Curb, always a foil to, uh, to uh, Larry David. Um, he was going to be in the upcoming 10th season of Curb, but he was ill. So he never made, not upcoming, That's that, that, it's already over. The season 10 is already over. I'm reading the January 2019 obit. A comedian's comedian, Einstein first made his, his uh, name as a writer. His career dates to the 60s when he won his first Emmy as part of the writing team for the Smothers Brothers. That will be dealt with in this podcast. And that is some funny stuff. That is some really interesting stuff, too. He also did Sunday and Share Comedy Hour, Dick Van Dyke. He did Pat Paulson's Half Comedy, Half Hour Comedy. He also showed up later on in Arrested Development. And he wrote for uh, and with uh, for Red Fox. <laughs> Can't a man relax? Do you remember that story? No. Oh, no. oh wait, I do remember that story. Oh man. Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> but he he spent his entire career living on the edge. Yeah, you you're gonna hear <laughs> that story. Uh, Super Dave's most memorable character on the Smothers Brothers was, as you say, Officer Judy who famously gave Liberace a speeding ticket for playing the piano too fast in 1969. <laughs> See what I mean? Guy was out there, man. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, hey, why am I getting a ticket, Liberace? <laughs> You're playing the piano too fast. That's awesome. Genius. Super Dave is really where I kind of fell in love with him, watching the Super Dave Osborne, you know, stunt show. Yeah. He's falling off the uh, tower in Toronto, <laughs> getting racked by a wrecking ball, being swept off while singing King of the Road. <laughs> he hits his head on an overpass. All of this was pre-Jackass stuff, you know? Yeah. Listen to this part. Listen to this part of his obituary. Perhaps uh, Super Dave's greatest stunt was having a case against him, nearly making it to the U.S. Supreme Court. A Polish group objected to an appearance <laughs> on the Dick Cavett Show in 1972 when he posed as the president of a fake Polish defamation league and told a series of offensive jokes. <laughs> no, that doesn't sound like Super Dave, does it? This is a Polish joke, and I, I, mean, I don't like telling Polish jokes, I know, but this is so perfect. Go ahead, Super Dave Osborne. Okay, an Irishman, Italian, and a Polish gentleman are waiting for the electric chair. Warden, <laughs> Warden, says, Warden says, come 
up. Well, I'm going to call your name. Come up one at a time. Say your last final statement. Sound quick like a man of flaherty. Irishman comes up. What's your final statement? I'm innocent. I may sit down. Pulls the lever. Nothing happens. He said, that's a million to one. Get out of here. You're free. Irishman runs away. Just have an uh, Italian comes up. What's your final statement? He said, same as singing. I'm an innocent. Sits down. Pulls the lever. He says, nothing happened. That's a billion to one. Get out of here. Jablonski, you're last. Polish gentleman comes up. He said, what's your final statement? He said, first of all, that chair's unplugged. (laughs) 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 Super Dave Osborne. See what I mean? Look at now. Listen to the way he he just said the first sentence, and you and I were already cracking up. Yeah. He, he just goes. This is a Polish joke, and I, I mean, I don't like telling Polish jokes, I know, but this is so perfect. Go ahead, Super Dave Osborne. Okay, an Irishman, Italian, and a Polish gentleman are waiting for the electric chair. <laughs> See, <laughs> <laughs> it's like immediately sucked into it. <laughs> It just immediately sucked in. But it had I known at the time that he was up it almost in the Supreme Court till they threw it out for going on the Smothers Brothers pretending he was from the oh excuse was the oh Dick Cabot. And pretending he was a uh, the president of the Polish Defamation League so he could just rattle off a bunch of bad Polish jokes. Oh man, that is funny. Super Dave, you're going to hear a lot of those jokes in here. You're going to hear the Red Fox stories, the Slappy White stories. Norm McDonald's in the studio. And then Super Dave calls in because I told him that Norm would be in and they like each other. You never, once again, never set up a Super Dave interview. Just I just leave a voice. Hey, man, let you know Norm McDonald's showing up. Okay. Yeah, he can't say, he can't stay away. No, he didn't. Then he just shows up. <laughs> but Norm... The deal with Norm at the time was Norm, I read a story that he had never spoken to his brother, hadn't spoken to his brother, Neil, in Canada for 15 years. And so I hooked up Norm with his brother, and Norm's talking to his brother, and Super Dave calls in, <laughs> and Norm and his Norm's brother was just really not that impressed. Aren't comedians supposed to be experts in off-the-cuff badinage? That's Norm's brother, because Super Dave was telling some jokes, and he wasn't laughing. Aren't comedians supposed to be experts in off-the-cuff badinage? You know, the, 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 the witty back and forth. What happened to that? Badinage is like Listen a badminton term. <laughs> I, you, know, I, you know what? I don't know how you wound up funny. That's all I can tell you. I have no concept. You must have run away from home when you were three. Do you have any other funny brothers and sisters? We could get them all on the phone. We could destroy Brandmeier forever. <laughs> We can destroy Brandmeier forever. Oh, he hated him. You'll hear that, the full interview, Norm and Super Dave going at it with his brother who ended up hanging up, I guess. I can't wait to hear it myself. Um, We're still not talking. Probably not after that. The art of botanage. (laughs) The art of botanage. Okay, what else? Um... They, Paul, Paul Rodriguez was on the phone. He called him. One time we're interviewing a turkey calling champion. For some reason, he thought that was funny. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Um, Super Dave, by the way, uh, his father was a um, a comedian himself. And name, Do you know the name? Yeah. His name was Harry Einstein, a.k.a. Parky, Parky a Carcass, a comic. He went under the name Parky a Carcass. Would you welcome, please, Parky a Carcass? Seems like I've heard that before. Harry Einstein, Park, Perry, Parky a Carcass. <laughs> and here's the really weird part, because this leads into when I first met uh, Super Dave Osborne. When Milton Berle and other comics told jokes at his father's funeral in 1958, the teenage Super Dave decided he would never go into comedy. He thought it was disrespectful. His dad's funeral, Milton Berle is riffing jokes on his dad in a coffin, and Super Dave's like, no, nah, I don't this is not for me. Can you imagine that? It's not for me. But the weird thing is, one day I'm talking to a fun- a guy, a comic, who literally was being hired as a the comic funeral guy. He will go to your wake and do <laughs> jokes for you. Okay, and Super Dave, at that point, this is the first time I was ever going to meet him in person. 
He comes into this. He, I'm on the air with this guy talking about, well, wait a minute. You go into funeral homes and you do jokes. He goes, yeah, people love it, blah, blah, blah. And Super Dave was waiting in the green room. He just said, to hell with it. And he walks in and he stayed with me two hours that day. <laughs> he, it was like, this guy was like my brother. We were just, it was so funny. He was just ripping this guy apart and telling jokes. And that's when I met him. And I never knew the story that his father had Milton Berle telling jokes at his funeral. Maybe that's what triggered it, right? Well, the fa- and the fact that he didn't like it and still wound up to being a, a comedian explains why he's so weird. Right. <laughs> he's doing he, something that he doesn't want to do, and yet he's a genius. <laughs> he's a genius doing it. Well, he was, anyway. Uh, he was. He would just call up, and out of the blue, he would tell any kind of crazy joke. He'd, it, he'd always, <laughs> and it was jokes that I've... He, I never heard before. Right. Like, I, that's the weird thing we kept saying. Wait a minute. How is it possible you get tell us a joke we've never heard before? And he did. I don't know if you know. This is a true story. Okay? <laughs> yeah. You want to hear it? Sure. Guy went to a doctor last week, and he'll tell you this. And the doctor said, what's the problem, guy? And he said, well, before I tell you, uh, you've got to promise not to laugh. He said, I've been a doctor for 45 years. I don't laugh at my patients. He said, all right. He drops his pants, and he's got a one-inch penis. Doctor starts to laugh so hard, he falls on the floor. Pounds the floor, pulls himself up on the desk. He said, I'm so sorry. He said, I've never laughed in my life. Please forgive me. What is your problem? Guy said, it's swollen. <laughs> oh, boy. That guy just kills me. Super Dave Osborne is dead. And uh, while we were gone, he died. We never got to pay him a proper, proper uh, salute. I mean, I'm going to miss jokes like that. A guy gets on an elevator with a girl. And he said, excuse me, young lady, can I smell your private parts? And she said, no, you can't smell my private parts. He said, then it must be your feet. (laughs) (laughs) The one... (laughs) <laughs> the only doesn't it seem like sometime we could talk all day I wish we could pal Super Dave Osborne <laughs> Memorial Tribute that was the last time I heard him doesn't it seem like sometime we could talk all day uh, ladies and gentlemen enjoy it this is the Super Dave Memorial Tribute you need to hear the history to see the future the Brenmeyer Archives Good morning. Super Dave Osborne, the greatest superstar, daredevil entertainer of all time. Marty Funkhauser on HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm. SuperDaveOsborne.net. Hey, is this really Super Dave, or is I did I been, have I been dialing the wrong? How, how long has it been since we've talked? A long time, brother man. Oh, I miss you so much. Super. It, no, are you on the air or are you just at home? I'm at home right now, but I uh, thank oh, you for great. calling back. So great. You're welcome. Yeah, I'm just here. You want to talk to my kids or anything? Or? Oh, no, not right now. I'm uh, having a beer. How about the cleaning lady? Anyone else? No, let me tell you something that happened to me yesterday. Yeah. And my, light, my right hand is on a, left hand is on a Bible and my right hand is in the air. Go. It is the best candid camera, except it wasn't. I'm having lunch in a restaurant. I had a root canal in the morning, not feeling great, but having lunch in a restaurant with my wife. Oh, the, the maitre d' brings an, uh, two women in and sits them directly across from us in a booth. And the, the, one of them is a little hefty and very loud, and there's only like 17 inches between the two booths across the aisle. One of them stands up to heavy one and says, I got to use the head. And I realize then there's a problem. <laughs> Okay, so she goes, she comes back, sits down, and says, oh, that was good. Oh, what are you going to have, she says to the other girl. And they're talking, talking, talking. And then she takes a handkerchief out and proceeds to blow her nose. Now, not at her partner who's sitting across from her, because that would be rude. She blew it completely on us. <laughs> and for 20 minutes, and it was like Al Hurt giving a recital. <laughs> I never felt wind like that and everything else, okay? Oh. And, and I'm trying to cover my salad and a little cup of soup. 
She then turns, and the woman with her said, what a lovely handkerchief. Oh. It's embroidered. She says, you can have it. I've got three others. Oh, my God. And gave it to her. She gave it to her. Oh, my God. And I, she gave it to her, and I had to leave my salad in my soup. <laughs> What? I couldn't even take it with me. Oh my lord! Did you? <laughs> I, know. I mean, That's I, there what was I said. there was a report recently that talked about how long and how far germs within a sneeze or blowing your nose carries. If you had seen that report and that had happened to you at the same time, you would have barfed There's in your salad. No storm this winter that carried that much volume. <laughs> it's the power of the wind and what came out of that handkerchief toward us was insane. <laughs> I like the fact that she got up and said, I have to go to the head. I got to use the head. That's when I knew there was a problem. Right. One woman says, I got to I gotta use the head. That. What woman says that? I got to use the head. Maybe Chris Jenner. You know what I would love for Christmas? I would love Santa to come down the chimney and kick Chris Jenner in the nuts. <laughs> yeah. You know what I would like? I would like Santa. Santa, what would you like, Super Dave? Come on, sit on my lap. What would you like for Christmas? Go ahead, little boy. What, what can I get for you? What would you like? <laughs> I already said it. <laughs> he never I'm repeats a punchline. He never repeats a punchline. But wait a minute, Super hey. Dave, let me ask you something. I yeah. have been calling you. Have you been getting our messages? That... No, no, because I'm out of town. Oh, my God. Who? Okay, wait. Is the number that we have been dialing your number? Because someone's getting a lot of craziness from us. It's probably, uh, yeah, it's probably my uh, message machine. Oh, my God. I don't Johnny know. B, I'm so happy that the way it's the bus still alive. Yeah, it's the, it's the bus still alive. <laughs> yes, did you hear anything? You know, Buzz, we were, we, I don't know how one of your jokes came up, and then we were going like, nobody knows these. First of all, when you tell a joke, we never hear these jokes ever again anywhere. So where do they come from? I don't even get it. I got one for you. Oh, <laughs> good. Let, let me say this, and, I, and, and no one could ever, it's impossible not to laugh at it. Okay. okay? Ten-year-old's walking down the hallway of his house. He hears screaming in his parents' bedroom. He opens the door. There's his father dressed in a cowboy hat and swim fins and nothing else. His mother's wearing an Oprah wig and bunny shoes, and they are having fun. And the little boy says, Daddy, what's going on? He says, oh, nothing. We're just having fun, Billy. Go to bed. I'll tuck you in in 10, 20 minutes. 20 minutes later, father's trudging down the hallway. He hears screaming in the kid's bedroom. He opens the door. Billy's having sex with his grandmother. He says, Billy, what the hell are you doing? He says, it's not so funny when it's your mother, is it? See, I see. I heard that one. But I heard, I know that joke. He's yes, gonna... I must have told it to you. Yeah, that's right. You told it to me. So now we know that you're the only one that tells that joke. Because but... Yes, I am. But the problem is I haven't taught you in so long. Right. And now, now we're going to get... Gonna keep Got to keep the communications line. Yeah, absolutely. Well, first of all, you have the number. You can call whenever you want. You got a number? Call here whenever you want now. How's the buzzer? Hey, I, I'm, I'm fine, great? Dave. Thanks for thinking of me. I appreciate it. I'm so glad you two are still together. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I think that's, that's awesome. So Can I, let me do great. a little, let me talk about your jokes for a second. Uh, yeah, yeah, Buzz is still alive. We're still alive. That is fantastic. I'm going to do a little uh, joke comparison Can because. I this one, but, but, but the problem is, this is a Polish joke, and I. I mean, I don't like telling Polish jokes, I know, but this is so perfect. Well, let me tell you, yesterday we were talking about their lining up in Poland, and all the listeners began to call in and tell Polish army jokes, so you're fitting right in today. Go ahead, Super Dave Osborne. Okay, an Irishman, Italian, and a Polish gentleman are waiting for the electric chair. Warden <laughs> says, <laughs> says, come up, well, I'm going to call your name, come up one at a time, say your last stop, final, do you know this, did I tell you this? Nope. Say your last final statement, sound, take it like a man of flatty. Irishman comes up. What's your final statement? I'm innocent. I may sit down. Pulls the lever, nothing happens. He said, that's a million to one. Get out of here. You're free. Irishman runs away. Just have an uh, Italian comes up. What's your final statement? He said, same as singing. I'm an innocent. Sits down. Pulls the lever. He says, nothing happened. That's a billion to one. Get out of here. Jablonski, you're last. Polish gentleman comes up. He said, what's your final statement? He said, first of all, that chair's unplugged. Super Dave Osborne, there's no business like a death business.
business. Oh my God, I love it. There's no sentence like, like a, a death, death sentence. sentence. Oh my God, that see. <laughs> And so now when I hear you say those jokes, I go, well, you know what? I'm going to try to repeat it. So I'll be out and I'll say, hey, remember that? There's an Italian guy and um, <laughs> and the guy, the Irish guy. My favorite joke you told on Kimmel was the uh, the dirt joke. But I want to I want to just do a, a joke comparison with you, Super Dave, for a second. Because I heard you, sometimes you change words around in the joke. One time you were on Conan. I don't know where this is, but listen to this joke. I love this joke. A guy gets on an elevator with a girl. And he said, excuse me, young lady, can I smell your private parts? And she said, no, you can't smell my private parts. He said, then it must be your feet. <laughs> okay, now. So, 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 so then, but it's weird. On my show, on this program, you use that. Can I, you, wait, wait, you say exactly. A guy gets on an elevator he says, with a girl. And he said, excuse me, young can lady. Can I smell your... Can I smell your private parts? Yeah, but on Conan, you actually use the P word just so... Now, why did you... The woman gets on the elevator with... Well, I'll dance around it, but she's got a cat in her arms. And he says, excuse me, young lady, can I smell your... Because she has a cat in her arms. Right. And she said, no, you can't smell my... He said, then it must be your damn feet. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Which way do you like it better? I like it. I like it, it the first way. The first, like way. the first way. Yeah, because otherwise then we have to... <laughs> we have because to... you got to bleep it if I do it the other way. I like yeah. it the first way. It's so good. But the joke that we like, this is the kind of joke that you do. The one you just told about the uh, the death row and the, uh, the Irishman. See, I can't remember. The Polish guy. That's one I think I can tell. When you told this one on Kimmel, I said, oh, I got to remember. Oh, man, I got to remember this joke. This guy goes to a doctor. He says, doctor, how am I? He says, not very good. He said, your one kidney's failing. Your white blood cell count is up over 1,000. Your artificial heart is on the blink. And it looks like both your lungs are filled with water. He said, well, what should I do? He said, I want you to go home and take a nice long mud bath. He said, why? He said, I want you to get used to dirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But see, the thing, though, we never hear those jokes anywhere. It's almost like you lie in wait, and then you build them up, and then you come out of the woodwork like some sign of cicada. Well, well, I'm not. I mean, I don't. Here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not a joke teller, but... But I love to tell a joke. I love to tell a great joke. Because yeah. I love to make people laugh. But I'm not a guy who goes out and tells jokes. Like, wait, wait. So, Super Dave, you have never done stand-up before? I know oh, no, you... no, I, I, no, 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 no. I, I, I now, why do, you, wait, why do you say it like that? Like, oh, no, 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 no. Why do you say it like that? Well, because my, my whole thing is to go out and tell people that these are not funny. Right. And tell a joke. And I did a thing once. Oh, it's not worth talking about. But but uh, I tell what? a joke and then and not enjoy the laughter because the audience laughs harder at the joke and then the fact that I don't get what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, it's just funnier. I just think it's funnier than yeah. a guy coming out and laughing at his own stuff. I think what you you know you're right about that because I think the fact that what what always gets me is that you can tell you enjoy it's the you just love. But I think you said it the other day. It's like he mm -hmm. he. You can tell he you're wants having, to tell it. You're having so much fun telling that joke yeah. that it infects you. I mean, the, the, I told the joke. I told the joke on Curb Your Enthusiasm, but you could never tell anywhere. And you know that show is all ad lib, and so I get the outline, and it says Funkhauser tells Jerry Seinfeld a dirty joke. Right. So I said to myself, "There's no place in the world I can use this joke except now." I told the joke. Jerry fell on the floor. And they left most of the laugh in, but because of camera angles, I had to tell it again. <laughs> and when I would start the story, someone would start laughing, either in the cast, in the camera crew. I had to tell it 11 times. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, let me let me be clear on this. So we're talking about Curb Your Enthusiasm, of course, where your character, Super Dave's character, is uh, Marty, Marty Funkhauser. And yeah. I was talking about this the other day. I was saying this is an example of how... 
It's just Super Dave B.S. Marty Funkhauser walking up to tell Seinfeld a joke. And I don't know if this is true or not, but in real life, I guess comedians probably wouldn't want another comic coming up to him. Hey, yeah, have you heard the joke? You can hear in the scene, Jerry's like a little, oh, here he goes. And Larry David's trying to say, <laughs> Larry David's going like, no, no, don't, don't bother him. I, know, I, I say to Jerry, do you want to hear a joke? Yeah. He says no. No, no. Jerry Marty Funkhauser. Hey, Marty. Hey, li- listen to this, Super Dave. Listen. Jerry Marty Funkhauser. Hey, Marty. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Want to hear a joke? Uh, no. No. Uh, no. And he goes like this. Ah, uh, uh, no. I don't want to hear it. But this is a great joke. So curb your enthusiasm. Now, now you've told it. And now I'm seeing this in a whole new way of respect. I. So this is the first time that he Jerry doesn't know the joke's coming. No. Le- no. Larry David doesn't know this joke's coming. Yes. The, the, the only one I told it to was Larry. Okay, let's listen. Here it is. Super Dave Osborne as Marty Funkhauser on HBO's Curb. <laughs> Jerry Marty Funkhouse. Hey, Marty, how you doing? How you doing? Good. Want to hear a joke? Oh, no, no. He doesn't want to hear a joke. We have a read through. Yeah, we got it. Let me just get right through it. Okay. A woman's very afraid of the size of her opening. What is she afraid of? The size of her opening. (laughs) So she goes to her mother. She says, what am I going to do? I'm so big down there. When I marry Harry, he's going to divorce me. Her mother says, don't worry, sweetheart. It runs in the family. Do what I did when I married your father. Go to the market, get some raw liver. Put it in there. I'll never know the difference. Oh, my God. So she does. They have eight hours of sex after their marriage. She wakes up at 10 o'clock. He's gone, but there's a note on her pillow. It says, my darling Harriet, to think that I waited a year to consummate our love relationship makes my heart beat so loudly. I'm surprised it didn't wake you up. The only reason I'm not here now, darling, is I'm at work to make enough money to buy you a house, a picket fence, we'll have dogs and children. Ah, oh, this is not so bad. Oh, yeah, this is great. Will you finish the fucking joke already? <laughs> when the five o'clock dinner bell rings, I will be home like the winged gossamer of your love in your arms, your loving husband, oh, Harry. that's nice. P.S. Your cunt is in the sink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you told your joke. Let's go. How good is that? It mean, surprised me. It surprised me. I had no idea it would yeah, be that fun. revolting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I had no idea that would be that revolting. <laughs> What's great is I'm there for support. Oh, my God. And, and Larry doesn't want me there. Yeah, that's when they're filming the Seinfeld reunion sort of a yeah, bit. Yeah, they're, they're reading through the script, and I'm there for support, and I've got a, a place. <laughs> You're not because you're like the annoying guy. You don't want on a set anywhere near any. Oh my God! Hey, you want to hear joke? Ah, no. And then 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 he goes, well, hey, then he goes, oh, that's not so bad. Like as he goes further and further, Dave keeps plowing further and further ahead. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, that's not so bad. And then then he goes, I had no idea it would be that revolting. (laughs) Finish your effing joke already, Larry Davidson. God. The last thing Larry David wants to do as that character in that scene is have you meet Jerry Seinfeld. The last thing in the world. Oh my God. And then Jerry said, I like him. Yeah. No, no, uh-huh. so, no, no. Wait, yeah, yeah, that's he turned. He did say, he turns to walk away. He goes, I like him. <laughs> I, said, I said, let's go sit at the table. He said, you go sit in the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like him. He's just turning away. Yeah, I, you know, I like him. Now, wait a minute. So now, you said you had to go shoot that 11 different times? I had to do the joke 11 times because every time I would start the joke, a woman's very afraid of size or opening something <laughs> No, oh, wait, wait a second. Or, or behind the, the, the scrim where the cameras are or the director or somebody because they couldn't take it. They knew where it was going. Because they heard it ten times. Yes. <laughs> well, wait, wait, wait. Let's break this down for one more second. There's one other thing in here where I heard and I go, oh, my God. <laughs> listen, listen. Jerry Marty Funkhouse. Hey, Marty. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Want to hear a joke? Oh, no. 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 Want to hear really. a joke? We have a read through. Yeah, we got Let me just get right through it. Okay. A woman's very afraid of the size of her opening. What is she afraid of? <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. Because, I love that so much. But how, see, that is what you probably, well, I don't know, but, uh, because you're such a spontaneous dude, but you worked in television your whole life and film. Isn't that like, when you get to the 11th time you're telling that joke, do you... No, 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 that was the first time. I know, but, so wait a minute. The one I'm hearing, the one that showed up was the best. The, no, no, the, 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 the one... The, the, the first time was, was Jerry saying that yeah. and also Jerry's reaction to the joke. Okay. And then some other cuts, but then they had to do close-ups of Larry, close-ups of me, close-ups of Jerry. So I had to tell the joke again and again and again. And the problem was 
I couldn't just tell it once for a take. I had to tell it three times each time because I get halfway through the story and there's a laugh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, that must yeah. by the eleventh take of the joke, you're like, oh my god! No, I gotta... no, 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 no. I'm loving it. I wow. just love it. I just love it. It's such a, it's such an outlandish, ridiculous thing for a guy who wasn't even invited to this thing. To come up to Jerry and tell this joke. Yes, exactly. And I, and only because he's Larry Davis. You're Larry David's friend. Your character is in this right. in real life. That's the only way he has to put up with it. Right. And then, then he said, what are you doing here? I, uh, later, he, I said, Jerry said I could stay. <laughs> <laughs> because he likes you. Hey, when is when is Curb coming back to, uh, to the airwaves? Is it I done? Yeah, I'm afraid it is, and it just upsets me so much. How do, wait, wait a minute. With Larry David, how do you know for sure it's finished? He say it's you finished. Don't, you don't. You don't. I left a message on his machine the other day. I said, I wish you didn't have a dime. Yes, that's right, but he's got a billion dollars. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's such a, I mean, that show is just so much fun to do. It's just so much fun to do because it's all ad lib. Right. So, so you're, you're really listening to what the other person's saying, and no one's memorizing anything, and you're, you're, it's just really, a, it's a blast. Yeah, now wait, so did, how do you know then it is? You don't know. Did Larry David say to you, uh, when you leave a message on his machine, he leaves a message back on yours, hey, uh, Super, I, I'm too bad I do have a dime, we're not going to come back, or does he ever say it definitively or no? For well, sure? He, he said it, but that really doesn't mean anything. Right. He's going to do a, a something on Broadway, uh, something he wants to do. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I hope it's a, a, a smash, and then maybe he'll come back. Well, i got to tell you something. I watched an interview. You you made me how it was uh, Inside Comedy with David Steinberg. And really? I wanted to get, I wish that he'd only done you. Listen, all the due respect to Eric Idle, but I wanted to see, because you were going on some things that you had to get cut off on. Um, I don't know if a lot of people know. You wrote for the Smothers Brothers, Super Dave. You wrote with uh, Steve Martin as one of the writing right. partners and David right. Steinberg, right? And and for the Smoth and Tommy Smothers really kind of gave you a break. You went out on a limb, gave right? Me my life gave me my life. Gave Steve Martin his life. Gave everyone in the, in that era their life. I mean, that show was so hot, and and we got picked up and then canceled. Yeah, you know, no show had ever been canceled before, and it came from the the White House. Yeah, because of the too political, the agenda. Yeah, because we were doing anti-Vietnam jokes. It was weird that, you know, I don't think a lot of people ever heard anybody say, you know, Tommy Smothers and the Smothers Brothers gave me and a lot of great, some of the greatest, yourself and Steve Martin, as you say, in the business, their first shot. That's a pretty amazing story. The other you one know, was... And, and, and to get, the thing is, is that... Um, do you, uh, do you want to? Oh, I don't want to bore people. But no, I want to hear this. I'm curious about this. Okay, it's very I'm interesting. Working, I'm working for an advertising agency. Yeah. Okay, I've been there three and a half years, and there was a guy in LA named Bob Arbogast who was a big radio guy there, and I used to use him for a lot of voiceover for commercials. What station and was he, he on there? He what? What station? He was on KMPC. Oh yeah, okay. And um, so. I, 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 he also had a, a local television show on Channel 5 out there on Friday nights. So I said to him, you know what, I want to come on your show tonight, and I want to be the guy who puts the stars' names in the sidewalks of Hollywood. And you, and, and, and you asked me, how does that happen? And yeah. I'll tell you about all the research I do and everything else. And you then intimate that you heard it's just a matter of money, and I'm going to blast you. And then you say, well, how would I get my name? And I start, and I said, do you have $10? Okay. <laughs> Audience laughs. Good. I go home. And I'm happy with it. It, it, it worked. And the next day, my secretary comes in the office and says, there's a Tom Smothers on the phone for you. So I'm going, oh, great. So I pick up the phone. I said, hi, Tommy. How you doing, pal? I said, I'd love to talk to you, but my uncle's a hunchback, and he's straightening up today, so I don't have the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> said, oh, and he said, Bob, yeah, Tom Smothers. I said, oh, my God. It is you. He said, yeah, I saw you last night. I love what you did. I would like you to come over to CBS today. I'd like to talk to you about something. And I'm, I've got chills. I've got chills. Yeah. It's so far removed from what I'm doing, and what I, so I go over there, and I'm watching rehearsal in the in the studio, and 
Now in my mind, I'm trying to make everything funnier. Everything funny that I see, I'm trying to make funnier. So he comes over and he starts introducing me to people and telling them what I did, this stupid little thing. And he says, um, we're doing a summer show with Glenn Campbell and we're using all new writers. I'd like you to be a writer performer. And so I said, okay. And he said, you're going to work with this kid. He's a magician at uh, uh, Knott's Berry Farm. His name is Steve Martin. I said, all right. Hi, Steve. How are you? And, and, and it, that's how it started. Wow. That's how ridiculous it is. And Steve and I moved together in a, in a duplex for six years. As roommates? Yeah. Wow. And and, um, and and so that's how I started. On, uh, and we went from Campbell to Smothers Brothers, and then and then when Smothers were canceled, um, Steve and I did a Pat Paulson comedy, half a comedy hour, and then I teamed up with Alan Bly, who was one of the producers of the Smothers, and and we did Sunny and Cher, and we did uh, I, I wrote on Sunny and Cher with Steve, and then Alan and I did Red Fox. And well, wait, Dick Van Dyke Red and- Fox. That oh my God, the Red Fox. The Re- tell me if this is true. You when you worked for Red Fox, you had a meeting with Red Fox, and he had a he had an office with sort of a a library and a revolving door, and he disappeared into it while you were talking Not to him. Revolving door. It was a fireplace. What do you? I'm sitting there. He comes and now he. I knew Red. He knew me, but he didn't know my partner Bly, so he called us Blanstein. <laughs> and, and he came up the stairs and he was beat and he said uh, excuse me a minute and he goes into a revolving fireplace and it becomes a bookcase I'm telling you the truth <laughs> and he comes out three minutes later and he said how you doing how you doing Blanstein okay and his white stuff on his lip <laughs> and I said you got white crap on your lip he said it always happens when I have sugar donuts for breakfast <laughs> Uh, to me, to me, that's like a curb episode. That's like a curb. It's like there's Red Fox. He's talking to these writers, Super Dave Osborne, Bob Einstein, uh, and he's talking to him, and he's like, "Yeah, uh, just a minute." And then the doors flip <laughs> around. Johnny, he was the funniest. He was this. This is oh, oh, oh. the hardest I've ever laughed. I don't know if I could tell this on the radio, but I guess I can. What is it? Um. The very first show, we got 400 people from the farmer's market in the audience. Ladies and gentlemen, Red Fox. And we had this giant set, this R-E-D-D lettering that turned into a tenement. And the music's playing, and out comes Red, but there's no Red. Music's playing. Ladies and gentlemen, no Red. I stop tape. I go to his dressing room. Now, all Red did all day is grass, coke, and sex. <laughs> but... But but when it came time to tape, he knew everything. Don't ask me how or what, I don't know, but he would watch me rehearse through a camera. So so I knock on the door, I hear, what? I open the door. The girl who does Red's hair is sitting on top of him. He's in the chair. So I see her, her dress, and his legs underneath. <laughs> and I said, Red, and from under the dress, he said, what? I said, we're on camera. He said, can't a man relax? <laughs> can't a man relax? Can't a man relax? That's How the... can you answer that? Can't a man relax? Oh, my God. The taping's going on out in wherever it was. You're saying a lot of money put into the Red Fox show. You're sitting out there. You walk in the door, and there he is underneath the woman's dress. Oh, my God. Oh, is oh that... my God. And there was story after... The, the first meeting I ever had with him was at his house. <laughs> and because he would have occasional toot on the marijuana, a little bit up the nose, mm-hmm. he had cameras, CBS, every, every camera you could possibly have in his driveway. And he, the bodyguard he had was a huge guy with a metal plate in his head. So we're talking about the show, and all of a sudden I look outside the glass windows where the pool is, and there's four or five dogs that are half horses. They're the biggest dogs I've ever seen, and they've got napkins on. They haven't eaten in months, and they're patrolling the grounds. And down the driveway comes Slappy White. Do you remember Slappy White? Oh, yeah. Oh, a great black vaudevillian comedian. Slappy White, of course. Oh, brilliant. So he comes in, and everyone called Red Chief. He said, 
said, how you doing, Chief? He said, good, Sabi. He said, this is my producer, Blindstein. He said, I want you to go down to the pool house, and I'll meet you later. I'm having a meeting right now. And he said, what about your dogs? He said, God damn, I've known you for 50 years. My dogs ever touch you? So I'll be sure to show this. And we sat like on Cinerama Dome and watched these dogs chase Slappy White around the yard <laughs> until he went into the pool with his clothes on. <laughs> and Red never stopped him. This is not a young man. Red never called the dogs up and he said, God damn, they did go after him, did they? <laughs> okay, let's talk about the show. <laughs> Slappy, hey Slappy, get off him. Get off Slappy. Get off Slappy's ass. Get, can a man relax? Can a man relax? Can a man relax under a woman dress? Can a man? Oh my God! I just love to be able to say the word "slappy white." Remember that story? Like Tom Tom Hanks. You know Tom Hanks was a. He ever told the story on Letterman about uh, was Slappy White? He was a uh, um, uh, a golf. Caddy. What do you call it? a caddy? caddy? Yes, a caddy, right? A caddy, I couldn't think of the word. A caddy and Slappy White. He took his Slappy White's golf bag. He pulls up to the thing, and Tom Tom Hanks takes the bag out, throws him in the back of Slappy White's car. Slappy White goes, "Stop bending the chair!" <laughs> Stop bending the shit! Like he went crazy and just kept, he remembered those words just like can't a man relax? Can't a, like, can't a man relax? And then I said to Red once, I said, um, we only give the audience twenty minutes tonight. I said, could you tell him a few jokes? And he goes, sure. And when he said yeah or sure to me, I knew I was in trouble. Wait, wait, wait. So you, you told him, Super, you, you told him, hey, Red, listen, we're a little, we didn't give him a lot of time. Why don't you go up and now tell him some of your stand-up? Not some of the stand-up, just a couple of jokes. Just Red Fox, Red, yourself. please go tell him some jokes. Right. Okay. So he comes out, and he, the first thing he says in the mic is, how many of the people wash you a strange area this evening? Your ass? And the, yes. And I said, that's enough. Thank you. Give me the money. Hey, how many people, no, 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 hey, how many people wash your ass tonight? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And there's purses snapping and people fainting and everything. And I, and I said, that, that, thanks, Red. He said, no, no, I got one more. He said, you know, they all got, got all kind of flavored douches on the market. <laughs> Strawberry, persimmon, pineapple. I told my wife about it. With my luck, she came back with tuna. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's walking out. Oh, yeah. And, and he says to me, is that good, Bob? Oh, said, no, thank you. Yeah. Thank you that's so much. real good, Red. <laughs> Kettle man, relax. Now I got to get back and relax. You know, people, I guess, who don't know the history of Red Fox, he may be one of the dirtiest comics that ever lived, but that guy was funny, man. But you know something? He was the guy that let them all. He was, he was before anybody. We're talking was, 50s for him, right? We're talking. Yeah, and, and I'm telling you, you would have loved sitting with him. Oh, he man. Got everything. He got everything so quickly and came back and loved to laugh. Oh, man. You, me, Red Fox, and Slappy White. That'd be my idea of heaven. <laughs> oh, guess, my God. Throw, throw Larry David in there. We got ourselves a party. But I swear to God, you got to bring Super Dave uh, Osborne, the uh, stunt back again, because. There was one video I just saw where it was you on top of... He, here's the magic of what you did. The, the stunt idea is hilarious in itself, trying to out-top yourself every week on the Super Dave Osborne show. But the fact that you were like on top of a trailer, playing the piano, and then you're saying, but you're touring the country uh, under the uh, stop profanity. I'm going to do a 500-mile sing-along. Yeah. <laughs> to, end, to end profanity on the highway because you can't sing and swear at the same time. Yeah, it's stop, the and, Stop and, Profanity and, Tour. And, and, a, and a quarter of a mile into it, Fuji drives under an overpass. <laughs> <laughs> and bam, then you bang your head. But I'm saying, most shows would be happy just to have the funny bit where the guy's playing the piano and his head gets lopped off under an underpass. Super Dave's got the whole, he sets it up with our, we're touring the country, 500 miles. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. It's the dumbest idea yes. you ever spend money on. That's right. That's it. And yet, somebody and said... I told the people, you know what? Put a couch on your car. Try it. Yeah, put it on top <laughs> of your car. Play the piano. You can't swear and drive. Oh, my God. I love that show. Super Dave I'm Osborne. i tell you a quick story okay. you're going to love. Go ahead. Okay? I had a joke about Oprah, and 
to me, it was there was no race to it at all. But I was I was concerned. Uh, the joke is, she goes to a psychiatrist, and the, and the, and the psychiatrist said, "What's the problem?" She said, "I'm fat. I'm overweight. I need help." He said, "Look, you make eighty Ouch. billion dollars a year. You know the joke." I know the joke. You have just interrupted a master. I know. I couldn't help myself because it's the only time ever that I'm going to know a joke that he's going to tell. <laughs> this is no, it. No, you know it because I told it. Yeah, but, I don't know, but, but I, okay, I know. But listen. All right. But so, so, <laughs> so the, the, she says, uh, uh, he says, look, you make $40 billion a year. You're the most famous woman in Rebuild. I don't see your weight problem. She says, look, I gave you a deposit. I need help. He said, all right, I'll do what I can. Stand up. Take off your dress. Now take off your underwear. Now get down on all fours and crawl <laughs> over the window. Now go four inches forward, six inches backward. Oh, she said, doctor, how's this helping me with the insecurity about my weight? He said, screw that. I bought a black Nagai couch yesterday. I want to see where it looks best. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. So wait, no, this is what's hysterical. Yeah. So I tell the joke on Letterman, but instead of Oprah, I use Delta Burke. <laughs> oh, my God. But wait, when I get to the punchline, he says, screw that. I bought a black Nagai couch yesterday. I want to see where it looks best in the office. I forgot to make it a white Nagai couch. <laughs> oh, my God. So there was silence. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is wrong with you, man? I'm telling Everything. you. Everything. Everything. All right, listen, one second. We got to go, but here's a super name. Here is you trying to tell the moth joke, and the guy you hear in the middle of it is Joe, smoking Joe I Frazier. I love this. And, Don't you love this? And all you hear is just, just a one, the, he interrupts. That's all. You walk into a dentist's office, and the dentist says, may I help you? And you say, yes, I think I'm a moth. And he said, you think you're a moth? Well, Unfortunately, I'm a dentist, and if you think you're a moth, you need a psychiatrist. He said, I know. A moth? He, he said, well, what? <laughs> First one, you see what I mean? He goes, a moth? Why did you come in here? And you say, because the light was on. You see, Su Super Joe took him 19 seconds into it. Why did you come in here? A, a moth? <laughs> <laughs> a moth? What? What is he interrupting? And you just hear Super Dave trying to get to the punchline. It's like, and that's a shortened version of it. But the long <laughs> version is, it's like Joe's. He's bobbing and weaving throughout the whole joke. Punch, punch. What? A moth? A light? Did you say a light? A man? Did you say a light? A man? There's a man in there. What'd you say? Super Dave's like keeps, but Super Dave keeps jabbing. Boom, 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 boom. Punching Joe Frazier till he gets to the punchline. Oh, oh my God. Super Dave, you're the best. Super Dave Osborne dot net. Uh, you. Uh, you call anytime you want, sir. We're Johnny always. B, it's been so long, and I can't believe how great it is. And tell Buzz not to shave his Adam's apple down. <laughs> that was the first time. <laughs> Just like Chris Jenner. Super Dave, we got to run. Thank you so much. Call anytime, right, brother. Great to talk to you. You're the best, brother. Okay, bye. Super Dave. Super Dave Osborne. Bob Einstein. Uh, Albert Brooks' brother. Whole family's unbelievably talented. There they are. Super Dave, the greatest superstar devil, daredevil entertainer of all time. Marty Funkhauser on HBO's Curb Your Enthusiasm, which we just heard will not be coming back, but don't believe that if it comes from Larry David himself. <laughs> and, and look, Buzz goes, couch. And I'm going, I can't, I yeah. couldn't stop. I knew it was wrong. Yeah. I couldn't stop. But the fact that he had to change it up to a white couch <laughs> and that got screwed up, it's <laughs> awesome. SuperDaveOsborne.net, that's where you find him. He's also Agent Caldwell, if you remember in Ocean's 13. He is the one, the only, Bob Einstein, Super Dave Osborne. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Yeah, uh, go ahead, uh, Bill. Listen, if I lose my job, it was worth it. That half hour was Super Dave was some of the funniest stuff I've ever heard on the radio in Chicago. The history of comedy with Red Fox and the Smothers Brothers and Steve Martin, amazing, Johnny. I thank you for it. It was well worth it. I, I love hearing laughing. the guy. And I tell you, the, the fact that we got the freedom to move around and not worry about getting cut off by a traffic report or something else is fascinating I'm, to me, and it's got to stay that way. I love it. I tell you, man, it really is, and people that don't see that are really – they're just not focused there. We're so conditioned exactly like you said to be bit bop, bit bop into different things. And that was just fantastic. And if this guy could speak his mind and have consciousness, I'm not blowing smoke up your butt. 
it was tremendous, man. It well, was yeah, really we good. Can blow it up, Super Dave's butt, because he deserves <laughs> it. And I'll tell you, the, the the history. He could talk if you know the history of some of these people. You got to respect the history of this business. This guy has been around for a long, long time. There were so many stories that I could talk about with the Super Dave, and we will continue those stories some other time. But I, I love it, and I appreciate the call, Bill. And I guarantee you, Super Dave will appreciate it. Keep rocking, brother. Thank you very much. The Jonathan Brandmeier Showcast. Bobby Goldsboro. I thought it was Carly Simon. <laughs> Bobby. Hello. Bobby. I have listened to the sports report, the traffic report, yeah. the incoming. Bobby. What, what's going on? Well, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, we wanted to hook you up with your good friend Super Dave Osborne in L.A. who just called at the same time you did. Hello. Super Dave, it's Bobby Goldsboro. Hi, Bobby. Hello. How are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing? Great. Hey, Super. Yeah. Did you get the message from Casey Kasem? Yes, I did. Thanks a million. Yeah. Hey, listen. What, what do you want, a world tour? No. What, now, listen, Bobby just called in from Florida. You know. Uh, what about? Well, the deal is, I was telling him how much you enjoyed the song, Honey. Yes. And he, at that time, was saying, really, did Super... Bobby, go along with this. Did Super Dave Osborne really like Honey? I did like Honey. Yeah, okay, sing one line from Honey if you really honey, liked it. Honey, I miss you. There you go. Was it? And Beautiful. I'm was feeling it. good. Hey, that was a great song. Okay, sing The Night the Lights no, Went Out. I'm not, not going to sing anything. Okay, how about this? <laughs> what am I on stage in your request? Why don't you, know, why'd you throw up your underpants? <laughs> All right, now, Super. What? Now, when was the last time you and Bobby Goldsboro sat down to really talk? Six years ago. Bobby, tell me about the meeting. I was incredible. We were uh, uh, we were going to put a honey house on the compound. Exactly. <laughs> no, really? Yes. No, we seriously. We have a place for Simba the Elephant to take a crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Why didn't that ever happen? Because Bobby wouldn't come up with the money. <laughs> so, Bobby, you had a chance to work the Super Dave compound and had a chance to work yourself into that. Super Dave uh, was giving you a nice deal you pulled out because of money only? Yeah, he said it was going to cost me 100000 so. Did I reach you at your apartment, or are you on the air? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bobby's uh, calling because, okay, so Little Green Apples, Bobby. That was Roger Miller. No, Little Green, I'm just waiting, I know Bobby didn't do that. Little Green Apples. What, are you talking about what happened after he ate dinner? <laughs> <laughs> the night the lights went out in Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> and, that was good. And Honey. Exactly. Bobby Russell song. That's right. That guy, they just buried him yesterday, well, you Super know what? I gotta Who say, did they bury? Bobby Russell. I gotta did say, he die? I just found this out. Uh, <laughs> no. Actually, I found this out yesterday. I didn't even know it. Yeah. And uh, How old was Bobby Russell? Bobby was, uh, I would think, in his uh, early 50s. How many years did he play for the Celtics? <laughs> that, I think six. I think. Oh. No, that, was, that was Bill. That was Bill. Bill Russell. Oh. Super. Uh, you know what? I got to tell you something. Bobby Russell wrote... Obviously, besides Honey, you wrote Little Green Apples. I recorded Little Green Apples in the Honey album, and it was... Why are you talking much... with that accent? You don't have that accent when I have dinner with you. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you trying to impress? Did you cut his hair, I Super I talk like that, too. If you want me to talk like that, we can all talk like that. <laughs> Get anyway, Casey Kasem on the phone, please. <laughs> I did the song in an album, and... It got played so much out of the album that to this day a lot of people think that I had the hit record of Little Green Apples and I never had a single out on it. Roger Miller had the country single and and O. C. Smith had the hit pop single. We That's have right. well, O. C. Smith was great. Yeah, hold but on. most people they well, were all you guys are great. All you guys are great. I love well, I, I, I'll drink to that. Thank you very hey, much. Hey Bobby, hold on. What a surprise we have O. C. Smith on the line with us right now. Uh, Terry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we call him Terry here. Go ahead, please. You ready? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, right, who is that? that's that O.C. Smith. That Smith I'll take. It's Jim Neighbors. Oh, was it? Yeah, calling from Hawaii. <laughs> I was trying to have him call Super Dave, too, but he was busy. He was stuck in a volcano. <laughs> he it, was what? He was stuck in a volcano. <laughs> Stuck in a volcano. <laughs> super. Hey, Super? What did you just say? I said he was stuck in a volcano. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know what you're thinking. It sounded like something, but it, it didn't certainly like... did. <laughs> you, know, you ever see the Al Pacino film Cruising? That's the lingo they used. Yeah. Now, I just put my underwear on over my pants. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't get stuck in a volcano. <laughs> Bobby Goldsboro, Super Dave, joining us to talk about Bobby Russell, the late Bobby Russell. I didn't know Bobby Russell. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay. I mean, I'd like to say some glowing things about him. Hey, way to ruin. But I didn't know him. Way to ruin a nice eulogy. No, I did know him. I knew of him, of course. He was a good guy. He really was. Super. Yeah. Would you sing the first line of Honey again for us? <laughs> Honey, I miss you. <laughs> Hey. I, I cut a record on uh, Honey, I Miss You. Did you? Yeah, I also cut the cheese. Uh, there he goes. I also <laughs> cut the cheese. Super, I got to... Oh, really... I hope I don't bring your show down. I... Thank you very much. <laughs> that, was, you... that was the flip side. <laughs> now, Bobby, what? when will you be that on... Was, su- that was called Honey, I'll See You. <laughs> <laughs> and it would sure embarrass Dave when Bobby <laughs> shut up and... Uh, yeah. Hey, Super... You're when, when will you have Bobby on again? Because that's one of the main reasons we're calling. <laughs> main reason you're Until we find another reason. How come you said main reason you're calling? <laughs> because what I, happened? I was choking. Did we get you during lunch? No, I was choking. <laughs> well, When's the next time you're going to have him on? When are we having Bobby on? Yeah. yeah. Very very soon. Dave, I want to do the show. I want to do a stunt with you, though. Wanna I would love to do stunt. a stunt with you. Huh? We'll blow up the honey house. Hey, great. <laughs> I love it. Where's the honey house? <laughs> The mother's brothers did the honey house. Where did I reach you people? <laughs> Super. <laughs> Super. I like your comments. Both of you. Bobby, you sports fan. I know you fish. Oh, I'm a big sports fan. I'm All a big right. baseball fan and football fan. Uh, Super Dave and Bobby, your comments on Earl Bruce. <laughs> I can't oh, believe it's going to be stuffed out by some guy by the name of Corey Johnson and Al Yates. I can't believe that. I don't want to believe that. Because all my life... I think it was Robert De Niro in, in disguise. No matter what I might, might think, I've been devoted to football players. I would not damage a player at all. <laughs> Ever? Well, Ever. The Ever. situation is, first of all, they felt he was under a lot of pressure. <laughs> and obviously, after the press conference, he proved he wasn't. <laughs> oh, yeah. He really showed the mellow side. Yeah, he just shot a couple of players. That was all. <laughs> you know, sometimes you can't get it through their head what they want him to do. And this guy jumped off sides, and he shot him in the back. <laughs> and I would accept that as a player or as a uh, an alumni, let's well, say, of Colorado right. State. I would accept that. Uh-huh. Because you've got to learn that the real world is the same way. Exactly. Exactly what I'm saying. Yes. You don't Instead do well. Instead of drive-by shootings, you can have it done at practice. You can do it right there. You don't That's perform, right. you're a dead man. May hurt your recruiting a little bit, but can you see him with a parent? You've got to send your kid here. Stop it! We've just got to have him. Let's get that ball down right now. Come on, move it. Oh. Oh. Hold on, kid. Hold on now. Oh, man. I can't believe it's going to be stuffed out by some guy by the name of Corey Johnson. <laughs> what a nut. How about his halftime talk? <laughs> <laughs> that was his halftime talk. <laughs> now, Bobby, yeah. when you were, uh, when you were uh, strung out on heroin for those years, did you, at the time, look to Super Dave for encouragement and help? Everyone did. Everyone still does. I appreciate that, but were you strung out on heroin? <laughs> I just found this out. I didn't know. Oh. Obviously, As a I, don't fact, know I saw you strung out on an episode of Cops the other night, didn't I? <laughs> he was on Cops. Yeah. Bobby, the song uh, Little Green Apples that Bobby wrote and he wrote Honey for You, they sounded exactly alike if you really put them together. They were the same song. They were. Just same same song with different uh, different tempo. Right. And how did the Knights of the Light went out to Georgia, whatever that was what called? What is that again? <laughs> the, light, the Knights of the Light went out to Georgia? I'm sorry. The Hold Knights on. Oh, how did the Knights... Why don't you read off your script instead of ad-libbing? All right, just a minute. <laughs> Super, what page were we on? Six. Six. Hold on a minute. The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia. That was the name of it. Hey, Bobby. That was for Vicki Lawrence. How was that song, Night's Light Went Out in Georgia? How did that thing go? <laughs> That's the night that the lights went out in Georgia. Da, 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 da. That was a guitar part. That's there. the night that they hung an innocent man. Exactly. Oh, no, no, no. That was, that was sung by Vicki Lawrence, who at the time was married to Bobby Russell. Super, can you bring Bobby back to do uh, like a salute to Bobby Russell? Yeah. When? That would be great. I'd like to uh, show him. Well, com- I, I have to get to my calendar. When do you <laughs> and start? It's in Detroit. When you're so done. What? what? Super, when you're finished bashing the Japanese on your cartoon, you know maybe, something? maybe you'll take some time Let me tell you to open up your man. heart to those Let me tell less you fortunate. Something. What? what? You heard me. <laughs> you heard me. <laughs> I didn't have any idea what you said. Hey, Super? Yeah. Super Bobby, you guys are both in showbiz, right? Yes, we are. I told the showbiz joke the other day, these guys didn't get it. Oh, that's right. Buzz, did you get it? 
I got it. Okay, but, you don't, but you don't think it's funny, right? I just didn't laugh at it. Okay. Let's see, let's see if they laugh, because I think only it's, showbiz doesn't guys... I mean, it's not funny. I don't, but I Let think, me hear it. I think I'm going to tell it. I have to set it up a bit. All right. I think only showbiz guys can appreciate it. And Super Date, if I'll stop before the punchline, and I'll bet you can give it to me. All right, go ahead. Okay. Devil comes down and sees this guy. Right. He says, hey, you're going to die. You did a couple of days. Listen, why don't you go to hell? Because I don't want to go to hell. He said, why do you want to go to heaven? He said, listen, let me show you a videotape of hell. It's beautiful. Beautiful women. You can eat all you want. Sex, everything, anything you want. It's beautiful. Look at this videotape. Do right. you know the joke? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So the guy says, okay, great. I'm going to hell. Guy dies, goes to hell. It's terrible. Flames, everything he thought it wouldn't be. Right? He said, this isn't anything like the videotape. The devil said. Go ahead. The devil said. Yeah, I know. That was you didn't the, see the pilot. That was the, that was, no, that was the pilot. Oh. You see? That, yeah. you, you had it there, didn't you? Yeah, it was close. That was the pilot. That was the now, pilot. Now, wait, wait, Super, don't talk. Bobby's still laughing. Go ahead, Bobby. I'm still laughing. I, I couldn't get my That breath. also works as an airline joke. How does that work? That was the pilot. That was the pilot. No, no, that does not work. Super's funnier in the afternoon. Yeah, I don't know what it is. He's killing me. <laughs> I'll tell you this one. Yeah. Okay, you're going to tell Bobby, then you've got to tell us a joke, too. All right. If you just join us, we're talking about Bobby Russell, what he meant to so many people, and Bobby uh, Goldsboro and Super Dave are with us. An old man wants to go into a retirement home because he's tired of living alone in an apartment, and he looks in the, Have you got time for this? Sure, go ahead. Bobby, do you? Oh, of course. Well, don't be so goddamn excited, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby? Jeez. Bobby, help him out. I just out. finished fishing, and it's dark, so I can't fish anymore. I might as well listen to a joke. All right, well, go ahead. Pull the boat over and uh, relax. All right, here we go. All right. A senior citizen wants to leave his apartment to go into a retirement home. So he looks in the paper, and he says, brand new retirement home, totally naked. So he goes over there with the ad in his hand, and he comes up to the desk. He said, excuse me, is this a totally naked retirement home? He said, yes, sir. He said, well, it sounds fascinating. The guy said, it's a brand new concept. We feel it will be better for the senior citizen because they won't have to wear clothes. They'll take that decision away, and it might prove interesting and exciting. He said, I'd love to see what it's like. He says, all right, just leave your clothes here, and you can browse around naked in the hallway, go have a sandwich in our coffee shop, and go up and look at our rooms. So the guy walks around, takes his clothes off. He's wandering around the hall. He goes in, he has a sandwich. Then he goes up to the second floor, and he's walking down the hallway, and a door is open. So he walks into the room, and it is spectacular, gorgeous, clean. And there's a 21-year-old, beautiful maid making up the bed. So he goes over, starts talking to her, and she's naked. Boom. They have, love, they have a love affair. Unbelievable. The old guy said, Hello. <laughs> yeah, the old yeah. guy finishes. It's funnier in the afternoon. Yeah, we, the old guy fi hey, listen. That's, the old guy finishes, yeah, gets yeah, up, yeah. walks toward the door, and falls down on his hands and knees. A male orderly walks by naked, sees him on the ground, and goes in and has a little love affair with him. Bobby, The old on. guy gets up, stumbles downstairs, <laughs> and says, Can I have my clothes back, please? He said, sure, Mr. Brantmeyer, what's the problem? Didn't you like our place? He says, no. You see, at my age, I can get sexually excited maybe once every six months. Unfortunately, I tend to fall down three times a day. Super. Did I tell you about the old father? No. <laughs> no, Bobby, no. Bobby doesn't have any time. Oh, let's hear a joke from Bobby. Okay, Bobby, your turn. Oh. Come on, you did the Tonight Show. Who did the Tonight Show more, Super or Bobby? I might have. Go ahead, Bobby. Yeah, okay. I, did it, uh, I don't know. I think I did it 23 times. Uh -huh. 23 times? What about you, Super Dave Osborne? You did it 23 times? You heard Bobby uh -huh. Goldsboro. You heard him. Come back, my man. Bring it on home, Super. 23 times. You, you did heard him. Show? You heard him. You got it. 2 3. Boy. Negatory on your part. <laughs> did he beat you or didn't you? Yeah, he beat me. How many did you do? About 15. 15. Well, you're ahead of all of us here. 23 times. Yeah. All, all right. you got to do is one full week in, uh, in a day or two more, and you got it. You all right. Now, Bobby, it's your turn for a joke. Bobby? Uh huh? It's Bobby's yeah, turn yeah. for a joke. 
Bobby's turn for a joke. Yeah, but I can add. He doesn't have to tell me how many times it takes to get to 23. <laughs> I hate when Goldsboro and Super Day fight. That's one of the big showbiz right. uh, feuds. All right, Bobby's got a joke. All right, no, go ahead. I wasn't prepared. I'm not, a, I'm not a good joke teller. I'm a good Yes, liberal. you are. I'm All good. country people <laughs> tell the best jokes. Right. You want to know the truth. When you perform. Who tell the best jokes? Do you know who was really funny is Roger Miller. He was very funny. Roger Roger Wallen, the funniest man that yes, ever lived. Yes, he was. Yeah, and a great guy. Yeah. You know, that that's what gets me. They, recently, I mean... With with Roger, Roger was one of the first guys that I ever got with when I got out to L.A., one of the guys that helped me get started and all of this, and I used to stay out at his house and all of this. He was a great guy, and when this happened recently, I was in, I'm was i doing all the music for Evening Shade now. And, uh, oh, great. I was out in L.A. doing this. Hey, and Super, I got that was very sarcastic. Huh? I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> all right, well, you better not be. That's why, that's you, why do you bite in and put your nose into someone's sentence? <laughs> Dave, isn't that your best? I am not being sarcastic. Dave, that's I like Dave's show. favorite show. Anyway. I like the show. That's your favorite what do you want me to say? All right, stop it. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I was doing this, uh, out working on the music, and my wife called out and said, they're doing a tribute to Roger Miller on Nashville Now. Did you, uh, or on the Nashville Network or something, said, uh, did anything happen? I said, well, no, they've just he's written some great songs. They're doing a tribute. I turned the TV, and they were telling a funny story about Roger, and I just turned the TV back off. I said, yeah, they're just talking about his music. And this was several days after Roger had died. I didn't yeah, even know Yeah, I know. It. It, it, very seriously, it was kind of, it was like... Very Immediate sudden. and silent. Yeah, it was very yeah, he was a He was a great guy and very funny. One of the funniest guys yeah. I've ever met in my life. Wittiest guys and clever yeah. and great lyricist and a really good songwriter. All right, really... now let's hear a joke. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a good joke teller. I'd Come on, to... one, but yeah, in your show you must have done one joke. I don't think you have to be in this crowd No, either. no. Oh, you hear that, Super <laughs> Dave? Was that who I think it was? Yeah, it was Buzz. Oh, boy. Never got your cassette, did you? Not yet. You didn't badmouth me. Yeah. You wanted to know why the mailman threw it away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it never got to the mailbox. An older father walks into his daughter's bedroom. Hey, what happened to Bobby Goldsboro's joke? <laughs> All right, go ahead. I like Dave's jokes better. <laughs> he walks into his father's bedroom. He, an old senior father walks into his daughter's bedroom, sees a vibrator on the bed. Oh, man. Daughter comes out of the bathroom. She says, he says to her, what is going on? What is going on? She says, look, Daddy, first of all, I'm 42 years old. <laughs> Secondly, I still live at home. Third, I hate my job, and I don't have a man. I have to have a wife. Father shrugs his shoulders and walks out of the bedroom. Next night, the daughter comes home from work. Father's sitting at the bar with a martini in one hand and the vibrator in the other. Daughter says, Daddy, what are you doing? <laughs> He says, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm having a drink, drink with, with my, my son-in-law. Son yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> Bruce had it. Yeah. I'm Who's having this a guy? drink with my son-in-law. <laughs> All right, now, uh, Bobby Goldsboro, instead of telling the joke, how about King of the Road for us, my friend? Do we say goodbye to Super Dave and his beautiful contribution to today's program? <laughs> I listen, love Johnny B. Listen, I know you're a drifter. He's the best. I'm sorry that Super Dave Johnny made us. Johnny B is my favorite. I love him. I'm sorry he made you. I don't listen to him because I don't have a radio, but I love him. Bobby, God I bless you. I never miss his show. Thank you. When are you coming back to Chicago, How Bobby? I'll be in the Ooh. audience for the Johnny B radio show. Remind me to have Super Dave here when you I get here. Get Great. Bye, Bobby. Where do I get tickets? All right. Hey, Bobby Goldsboro, you know what? Do you know him? Now, he's hung up now. Do you know him? Bobby Goldsboro? Yeah. I do now. I love throwing people at you. You're just like playing tennis with but celebrities. How do you do it so quickly? I yeah, love yeah. when you play in tennis. It's like playing tennis with celebrities, and you're just the king of the volley. Boing, boing, they're coming at you. But you know what? You chickened out on Casey Kasem. But I don't. <laughs> can I tell you something? What? I called you up to talk to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Super, we've got to run. Would you do me one more favor? Yeah, we've got to run. We're busy. Make that tennis sound effect again you just did. Okay. <laughs> Boing, boing, you said. No, I went. No, you went boing, boing. I did not. I went. You you're, said you volley, you're playing bo like boing, boing. I, you volley like. That's better. You like that? That's better, yeah. When are you coming out here? Uh, tomorrow. When are you coming out here? I'm not going to tell you now. I'm coming into Chicago this weekend. Okay, great. Day. I'll be there next week then. When are you on? I'll call you. <laughs> when are you going to be back? I'm Super, here. we have to go. No more jokes. Why? Because I think you ruined, I thought, was a very beautiful tribute to a guy who wrote Honey, The Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia. I didn't know the guy, and, and I didn't know he died. Yeah, and you don't care, do you? Because do you live care. in your own little world where Fuji is nothing but a you taunt. Know, that's very untrue. Super, we've got to run. <laughs> have a good that's day. really not <laughs> true. Super, we love you. Where are you going? Bring a honey to the compound. I've got honey all over me right now. <laughs> The Jonathan Brandmeier Showcast. This is the new 
not normal. They're now scra- crawling across the desert, going, water, water, water. And he comes upon a Jewish Thai salesman in the middle of the desert. And he says, water. Thai salesman says, you want a tie? He says, no, water. He said, uh, all right, 40 miles to the west. There's an inn. They got water there. Arab leaves crawling. Next day, 5 o'clock, Arabs crawling across the desert. His face is on fire. Water! Water! Comes up to the tie salesman. He said, didn't you get water at the end? He said, no, they wouldn't let me in without a tie. <laughs> you were Dave Osborne. <laughs> All right. Uh, what up? <laughs> What up, America? What up, world? Uh, Super Dave Osborne, the one and only. It, 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 I don't know where he gets the jokes. I don't know when he tells the jokes. But whenever <laughs> I see the great Super Dave Oms, uh, 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 Osborne, uh, Bob Einstein, the brother to Albert Brooks, I, I, I swear to God, I know when I see him, whether it's on a television show, a film, he's going to come out and tell a joke. Now, I'm watching uh, this comedy Bang Bang show the other night, and uh, there is uh, the host, uh, Scott Aukerman, uh, they, every uh, week they misname him Steve Aukerslike, or they always say his name wrong. And he's sitting there and he's doing a show. And I see this old man, this guy dressed as this old, uh, uh, stumbled old vaudevillian man, gray hair, old beat up sweater. And he walks out and I go, Oh, it's, it's Super Dave. It's Super Dave Osborne. And I go, Okay, I know what he's going to do now. He's going to tell a joke. Because he was a part of a comedy team. I think it was Wrinkleman and Irons. Get it? <laughs> Wrinkleman and Irons. And then the host, Scott Aukerman, says, hey, why don't you tell a, a joke? And, of course, he tells a joke. Want to hear a joke? Yeah, yeah. We- oh, wait a minute. That's it. Because, see, even remember when Dave, Super Dave went out on uh, Seinfeld? They don't, he meets him in Curb Your Enthusiasm. He sees Jerry. And he uh, just begins to tell him a joke, and uh, Larry David's going, no, 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 you know, I, he doesn't want to hear a joke. So Super Dave always just volunteers a joke. He doesn't get asked to tell one, he just tells the joke. Want to hear a joke? Yeah, yeah, we want to hear a joke, right? A woman takes a dog to the vet. She's got a great day. Another woman's got a poodle. And the woman with a great day said, what are you here for? She said, my poodle's in heat, and whenever I bend over, it's on my back, so I'm having him neutered. The woman with the Great Dane said, my dog has the same problem. She said, you're having him neutered? She said, no, I'm having his nails cut. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Please, I I have to leave a message for Super Dave. Please dial him up. I have to. I I mean, something is drastically wrong with him, yet so beautifully right. (laughs) <laughs> and he's, do you hear he has a lisp? The other one's uh, clean. That's, what you, you say the other one's clean? Yeah, the, the other part is beef, the other part okay. is so it's good. All right, this is a Super Day from Thursday's Comedy Bang Bang on IFC, and Hector has said this is fine. Yes. Did I ever tell you about the... Remember, he's a character, but he's not playing Super Dave. He's playing Mr. Wrinkleman, a partner uh, with the team <laughs> Wrinkleman and Irons, the vaudeville comedy team, co- coming to visit Scott Aukerman on Comedy Bang Bang. Did I ever tell you about the first movie I ever did with Marilyn Monroe? This woman was beautiful. And I went to her trailer and I said, look, would you mind if I put my private part on your knee? And she said, Harvey, do me a favor, sweetheart, and get the out of my trailer. Did you ever get her, Marilyn? No, I was involved with the wives of the platters. It was a great time in those days (laughs) because the platters were always working on the road. And I would take care of their wives. Did you ever make a record with them? (laughs) Five of them at once? A hundred times? That's a record. That's not going to be broken, my friend. So now we know that Super Dave went with the... We know that Super Dave went with the wives of the platters instead of the (laughs) Marilyn Monroe. Turn around. what are you talking? What is cop? What is cop? Where? What was I on? Super, I'm telling you, super dialing us back. This great Super Dave, comedy bang bang. I'm watching this guy. I was telling the audience. I'm watching the show, and I see this uh, man. This guy. What's his name? Wrinkleman. Wrinkleman. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, go you ahead. You know who it is, Wrinkleman. So he comes right. out and he tells this joke about the. And I go, oh, look, it's Super Dave. This is going to be great. He's going to tell a joke. 
He's going to tell a joke. And sure enough, there he walks in. He's waiting. And nobody wants to hear a joke when Super Dave comes out. They He just volunteers oh. it. Yes, go ahead. Want to hear a joke? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we want to hear a joke, right? A woman takes a dog to the vet. She's got a great day. Another woman's got a poodle. And the woman with a great day said, what are you here for? She said, my poodle's in heat. <laughs> and whenever I bend over, it's on my back, so I'm having him neutered. The woman with the Great Dane said, my dog has the same problem. She said, you're having him neutered? She said, no, I'm having his nails cut. <laughs> <laughs> super. And, you, and with the list, Super, it really makes it so much better. I know, I know. I was just trying to be an old man. Yeah, that's great. So do you say to what often? Was that on? What was that on? That was on Why Thursday. Was it was on Thursday night on IFC, and I'm watching. I was just fascinated by the whole thing. And then the Marilyn Monroe story, and you're dating all the Platters women. And, oh, God, it was so... Did, what you, you didn't even know it was on? No, I didn't even know what it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Comedy Bang Bang. It's a show on IFC. You were on it Thursday. Why was I on it? I have the slightest idea. <laughs> Why I was on Comedy Bang Bang. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> and you kept calling the guy Steve and Seymour. And his name is... <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I, every time, I don't know where these jokes come from. Here's what Buzz said before you came on again. He goes, when Super Dave tells a joke, he really loves his joke. And you can feel it in your voice that you want to tell it. You can it. feel that. You, that you believe this joke that you are currently telling is the funniest joke in the world yes. at this very moment. But it is. And that's, infe that's, and that's infectious. That's, <laughs> if, I, if I texted it to you, you'd throw your phone against the wall. Right. Yeah, I'd say, what's he texting me this joke? I, I mean, the fact that he starts out a line like... Did I ever tell you about the first movie I ever did? Well, you can see the Scott Aukerman on Comedy Bang Bang. By the way, you can watch Super Dave as his character, or I don't know what it was, Mr. R Wrinkleman from Wrinkleman and Iron, the comedy <laughs> duo. Uh, comedy Bang Bang replays on demand. It was this past Thursday. You, know, you can see Caitlyn Jenner's and and uh, you can see uh, Super Dave with no feet on the cover of Vanity Fair. <laughs> but I uh, I mean, that's it. So, oh, Super... no, wait, I'm going to tell you a joke, oh. but I'm not going to get off yet. I'm not through. Go, go. Okay. <laughs> tell uh, the joke. Uh, man and a woman grow up with a similar problem. He's got the worst smelling feet in the world. And she has the worst smelling breath. And the two of them, their whole life, are so humiliated, they walk around looking at the uh, sidewalk. One day they bump into each other. They look into each other's eyes and love hit. They start skipping down the street. They go to the first hotel. They said, give it where it's your the honeymoon suite. They said, it's five floors up there. We don't need an elevator. We'll skip up the stairs. They go upstairs. They come to the door. He says, sweetheart, you go to the bathroom, get ready. I'll go to my bathroom, get ready. I'll meet you under the covers in five minutes. So she goes into the bathroom and does her nightly ritual. She gargles with pool chlorine. And he's in there soaking his feet in acid. All of a sudden, the doors <laughs> open, and they fly under the covers. He grabs her face. He said, my darling. She said, sweetheart, before we kiss, I have a secret to tell you. He said, I already know, my darling. You ate my socks. <laughs> yeah. Well, they say crazy things. The Jonathan Brandmeier Showcast. This is the new Not Normal. Ladies and gentlemen. We are proud to introduce a champion. Do it, Ricky! <laughs> turkey champion! He is the turkey calling champion. He is Ricky Joe Bishop. Do it again, Ricky! It's beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know who that reminds me of? What's that? Yeah, Super Dave Osborne. You ever see that stunt guy? Yeah. Yeah. He is something, isn't he? Right. Isn't he something? Yeah. I mean, he does these stunts and they never work. Johnny, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Super Dave, you know who that is you're talking to? Who? And I would like some respect. Who is it? Ricky Joe Bishop, the national turkey calling champion. You're kidding no, me. Call for him. Call <laughs> the him. Wild, is the Wild Turkey Bourbon Grand National Championship. How did you get Ricky Joe? Hey, well, listen, <laughs> i got to tell you something. I've been fighting a lot of people to get him. Hey, that's right. Jay Leno called Monday. You hear that? Yeah. Jay Leno called. Do the call when the turkey is angry. Do that call, Ricky. All right, go ahead. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, I'll do the fighting part. Yeah, really loud. Is, when two get into Where's fight. Ricky from? He's from uh, Manchester, Georgia. Is this Ricky making this noise? Yes, it's Ricky making the noise. <laughs> right. That's the a human being making that noise? Do it again, Ricky. Show him. <laughs> the fighting part when you're mad. Yeah. Ricky, I want you on my show. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Just what is... Just two gobbles have been to go at it. Rick, uh, now, Ricky... Ricky, when did you first start doing this? Uh, probably about six years ago. And has anyone ever said, gee, that's unusual to start that? <laughs> well, down, here, down here, there's a lot of contests and a lot of people... Where are you from? Fighting. Manchester, Georgia. <laughs> Manchester, Georgia? Right. We just can get that down on the map. Are you married? To his yeah. sister? <laughs> right. Now, does your wife make noises like that? No, she, she's getting pretty fed up listening to it. I bet she took the mirror away above your bed, hey. too. Hey, Super Dave, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's so funny because Ricky was showing me off there kind of some of the different calls. And, Ricky, see if this is a good one. This is supposed to be the mating call of the gobbler returning the answer to I the... know what this is going to be. You know what? Yeah, so you I know... Knew... Yeah, yeah. I knew that. Back to you again, huh, with your little I gas was sure joke. of that for yeah, you. Right. What is this? Are you ready? <laughs> yeah. Clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, <laughs> bang. Clip clop, clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. Ricky, would you like to answer that in Georgia? Um, uh, he's got me stumped. It's an Amish drive-by shooting. Ricky, let me tell you something. Hey, Super Dave, would you like to hear Next my interview? Next time Leno calls, take, the, take him up on it. Hey, oh, Super I'm Dave. Waiting. It's a much easier shot than this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not beyond that. There's, there's no idiot sports guy. <laughs> Nothing. Super. What? Super, would you like to hear it? We had another exclusive today. I know you're wondering, how did I land Ricky Joe Bishop? But listen, we had an exclusive. Ricky Joe, I want you on my show in Vegas. What do you look okay. like? Uh, I'm, I'm six foot three and handsome. <laughs> hey, Super, I'm going to put him on. No, I'm not interested if you're handsome. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, believe I me, just Ricky. Know. I don't resemble a turkey. You do? I don't. Oh, all right. Ricky, that's what he's going <laughs> for. We may have to know put you in a costume, man. You've never heard the... are fabulous. Come on, you know Super. Do you super have any children? Uh, one, little boy. Does he think you're unusual? He's trying to do turkey calls already. He is? Eight months, 18 months old. <laughs> well, You're I've never heard anyone him. that good in my life. Are that you the grand fantastic. champion? He's I'm the uh, Super Dave, shut wild up! turkey bourbon grand uh, national champion. And what did you win with that? We're going to get Peggy and Lee on the phone. Been ringing off the hook ever since. We're getting Peggy Lee on the phone in five minutes. All right, go ahead. Because I want you... You know, I love these stupid threats. Hey, Super Dave. <laughs> what? You know what? It was really interesting. That Ricky Joe's going to be on your show, and we want to watch that because that's going to be great. Uh, hey, you know what, Ricky? Hold on. I'm going to put you in touch with Super Dave. Do us the uh, good bike. Let's say a turkey has just had sex, and he's walking away out in the woods, and he's just heard Super Dave's clop-clop joke, and he's and walking he's out. He's a cigarette, right? And, and how does he's he... has got so a cigarette, and he's putting on his short. How does that sound? Uh, it would probably go... I'll tell you what, I'll give you the key-key run. All right. <laughs> 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 that sounds like Fuji. Bye bye. Fuji. I can't believe you do this. <laughs> Fuji and Super Dave I mean, in the that shower. Is the Jonathan Brandmeyer Showcast. Brandmeyer! This is the new Not Normal. Paging Norm McDonald. Paging Norm McDonald. Please come down to the studios. Norm McDonald, please. Hey, Johnny. Let's see you, Fally. The one and only Norm McDonald. Super Dave Osborne on the line. I was going to yeah, ask you to phone Super, Super Dave. Dave. Yeah. Doing, How's it going, Super Dave? Hey, Happy Super, Super birthday, Norm. Uh, is it my birthday? It's tomorrow your tomorrow birthday. It's your birthday. That's why I'm calling. Uh, uh, Super you know Dave. I got you um, a picture of Sarah Palin's husband. Oh. And I had to make the X very big. That's good. <laughs> Oh, no one asked you to comment what's good. <laughs> you know how funny this guy is? Yeah, I do. First of all, Norm is the funniest man in the world, and he's a great father, but he's impossible to get a hold of. I just got a hold of him. Yeah, but he never calls you back. You uh, leave messages, and he never calls you back. No, we got to get together, though, man. No, no, no. You always say that, and we always do, and we never do. Hey, you, guess what? Guess what, Super Dave? This will be, Now it makes perfect sense to me. I hear this about you, Norm. That Dave, Super Dave, I don't believe he's telling. I don't think he's embellishing. I think he's telling the truth. No, I am telling the truth. Let me tell you something. 
How old are you going to be tomorrow? 46. He doesn't have a driver's license. <laughs> he doesn't drive. Now, what a lot does that of, say to you? A uh, lot of people are like that. I heard that he has not spoken to his own brother in five years. Oh, that's ridiculous. Well, you have to take, sometimes you take a break. No, wait. True or false? <laughs> have you spoken to your brother? You have two brothers, right? Yeah. Uh, one of them is in Canada. Both are in Canada, right? Uh, one's in Washington. One's in Canada. You have not spoken to your brother. Is it Neil, is it? <laughs> what are you telling me? Is it true or false? Is it true or false? We're talking with Norm McDonald, actor, writer, producer, stand up comedian. Super Dave Osborne one time said, I can never get him to return calls. His brother, Neil McDonald, who lives in a farm town in Quebec City, <laughs> says he has never returned his calls in five years. That's ridiculous. That's what I, is that true, Neil? <laughs> Listen, I'm a Canadian reporter living in Washington, D.C. I'm used to not getting my calls returned. Yeah, right Neil, how you doing? That's your brother, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Super Dave, his brother, Neil, answer the question so Super Dave will not feel bad. Neil, have you have you spoken to Norm, your brother, in the last five years? I haven't spoken to Norm in a long time. It's kind of hard. <laughs> It's kind of hard to get your calls returned. He, did, wait, wait, I Super Dave. See what? See, I always think Super Dave's kind of lying. So, so, wait, so Super Dave's first name is Super. Yes. So, like, if I called myself Great Neil, you'd have to call me. You know, Great. Neil, there's a reason he hasn't talked to you in five years. Because <laughs> you bore the living crap out of him. <laughs> now, let me tell you this: the yeah. Queen of England is walking with an administrator in the hospital. What? I said the Queen of England is walking with an administrator in a hospital. She walks by a room, and a man is masturbating. She said, oh, my God, what's going on? He said, well, uh, he has a problem. It's a physical problem, and if he doesn't do that five times a day, he could explode and die. She said, oh, I'm sorry. Then they go to the second floor, where she walks by a room. A nurse is giving a man oral sex. She says, oh, my God, what's wrong? He said he's got the same problem as the guy on one, but better insurance. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, she was, no, but if that was in Canada, the government would provide it. See that? See that? You and you know who should Norm, hook him? Norm, wait another five years. <laughs> I'm telling you, if that's what he does, if he comes back with that Canadian crap, don't talk to him. <laughs> now, listen, here's what I want to know. I want to know how a guy, uh, you're 46, are you, Norm? Yeah. Yeah. I want to know a guy who was born 46 years ago in Quebec City and grew up in the same house I did, acquired a Brooklyn accent. What the hell? Where, where'd that come from? Oh, yeah. Do I have a Brooklyn accent? I don't know, but your brother now is dogging you. Super Dave is correct. <laughs> and, I'm seeing, and I'm seeing him on, on Bill O'Reilly. Uh, Norman is one of the 37 Americans left who still think George Bush is doing a great job. Wow. Oh, I do. No wonder you haven't talked to your brother in five years. <laughs> no, I think someone just, just someone just drop an anchor off the boat. <laughs> Weren't yeah. we sailing in comedy heaven? And yeah. someone came on and just dropped the Canadian no, I'm anchor. Listen, I'm not a professional comedian. I'm very funny though. I'm a very funny. Guy. Yeah. Well, why don't you show it? <laughs> what are you waiting for? How old are you? <laughs> no, I think George Bush is, 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 is terrible. Wait, let's go here. We, no, George Bush is not terrible. Terrible is one thing. George Bush has to climb up to be terrible. Super Dave Osborne what? with what us. Norm McDonald in the studio and his brother Neil just joined us. Yeah, 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 family members that can really make this a party. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's great. Time. It's great being on the same line with you there, Super. I, I watch you on Larry. Uh, on Larry David, I think I think it's pretty funny. Oh, then I like you. I take it. Oh. I take it. I take it. Oh. Look at that. He loves him on Curb Your Enthusiasm, and now he's a fan. Oh, I'm a big fan. Big <laughs> fan of Neil McDonald's, are you? That's I can right. tell you I'm how to get back down another five years. I can tell you how to get the CBC's news show online there, Super. You can watch it on your computer. I'm sure you Thank will. You very what? much. Are, are, do you have a, are you a sheltered person like Norm is? <laughs> no. But you no, know what? No, can I'm I say not. something about Norm that no one knows? It's I, spend all, I spend all my days trying to get people to call me back here. I mean, I'm, a, I'm one of these ignored. Right down, Neil. I'm talking. Super Dave is talking. Is a great father. No, Super Dave is yelling. I'm telling you that. Well, how else am I going to make my point? <laughs> no one's a great father. I don't know if you know that. I'm sorry. I do. I know. And Dylan's a great boy. He, yeah. uh, he he looks a lot like Norm did when he was young. That same sort of angelic blonde thing going there. You know. Okay, take over the show, and I'll quiet down. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Just a second, once. See, see if, see if Johnny, yeah, go see ahead. If Johnny loses the call letters totally. <laughs> No, but super. What? Um, Neil actually lives in Washington. He doesn't live in Canada. I'm going to Canada in two weeks. But he lives in Washington. I haven't oh, lived in Canada for 10 years. 
Why do you live in Washington? Because I'm a foreign correspondent for Canadian television. Oh, that's a good job. Yeah, Norm, that is that is right, Super Dib. It is a good job. I said it's a good job. Yeah. What do you want me to say? You didn't mean it. I did mean it. You know, no uh, one asked you to interpret for me. I'm just kidding. This I'm is hurt. Not the match game, my friend. The match game with Super Dave Osborne. The match game. Neil McDonald, Washington, D.C. Norm's older brother is a blank. Hey, is Norm, a, why don't you call me back? Is a blank. <laughs> Super Davey is a blank. Norm, why don't you call? Hey, Berta, Berta says happy birthday, too. Why don't you call me back? Oh, uh, give my love to Berta, man. We'll go eat. Yeah, let's go eat. Yeah. You know what? We'll talk about your brother. <laughs> yeah, Super Dave said he's going to go eat with me like 90 years ago. I've never even met him. Oh, no Johnny, kidding. He always really, says that. That's, that's his that's line. That's really fair. No, that's, that's Super's fair. line. No, it is Let's fair. go eat, and yeah. then you never yeah. you never get a dinner. You're like red buttons, you know? Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, and red buttons is dead, Norm. <laughs> Like red, buttons. red buttons was waiting for super to vote. Right. And I never got a dinner. You know what's funny? What? And it's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> I'm hurting and I'm angry. Americans no, but, but are hurting. Funny, right we're now hurting. They're angry. They're hurting and they're angry. We're hurting. They're angry. We're angry. They're hurting. I'm hurting. Americans. All right. I'm hurting. They're angry. And I'm angry. We are. We're all hurting and we're angry by all of this. You know, Norm and I were going to do a radio show. That's right. But then Neil wouldn't be a part of it, so we mm. said no. <laughs> Neil, why don't you help those guys out with their radio show? Norm, Super Dave, and Neil McDonald. Yeah, that's just what they need. They do. Hey, listen, <laughs> do you want to say, do you want to say happy birthday to your brother here? Yeah, happy you know Neil. Neil sounds like a good guy. How come you never call him? Yeah, why don't you ever call your brother? Norm is terrible. <laughs> that's terrible. No, I'm going to start texting. No, what? You I don't. Do that. Wait, wait, wait. I hate that so much. I want to be clear. You, he doesn't have a cell phone. That's nonsense. You hate you hate texting. I hate texting. I hate it. Hey. I hate people. I hate people walking around staring at their hand. Welcome to the twenty first first century, it is. buddy. It is. Yeah, come on. I love texting. Yeah, you know why? Texting? I like it's Are very quick. Right to the point. Get to the point. What's wrong with talking? That's nah, too much trouble. <laughs> too much trouble. I did. Norm, wait a minute. You don't have a computer, do you? Or you don't drive a car? No, I don't. You don't have a computer? I have a, I have a computer, but I don't... Uh... Little kid walking down the hall of his house. Yeah? He's screaming in his parents' bedroom. Opens the door. There's his father dressed only in chaps. His mother's dressed in a cheerleading outfit, no underwear. They're really having fun. <laughs> he says, Daddy, what's going on? He says, oh, don't worry, sweetheart. We're just having fun. Go back to bed. I'll be down there and tuck you in in a minute. <laughs> 20 minutes later, father walks down the hall. He's screaming in the kid's bedroom. Opens the door, there's his kid having sex with his grandmother. He says, Billy, what are you doing? He said, it's not so funny when it's your mother, is it? <laughs> the stylings of Super Dave Osborne in studio. Norm McDonald, his brother Neil McDonald on tour together sometime very soon. Norm McDonald's birthday. That's I thought right. comedians were supposed to do witty repartee and not tell jokes. Ooh. That's Neil McDonald talking <laughs> yeah. to Super Dave right now. Once again, the you know question, what? Neil McDonald is a Can blank. I say something? Can I say something? Yeah. Oh, that's the old match game stuff. Norm used to sit in front Can of the television something? and watch I, I match games. I've, had... I've, been, I've been in this business a while, <laughs> and I've never heard anybody say what he just said. <laughs> I've never heard anybody say witty, even in class when I was a class clown. What about the witty the teacher, and never, the teacher never stopped me like that. I've heard ready whip our tea before, but that's uh, that's a bit silent. No, but aren't you supposed I'll to be experts in off the cuff badinage? Wait a minute, Neil Call said a word. Up. Wait, I'll wait, bring this thing right off the air. If Neil, you got anybody listening? I'll just just stop it. Neil, I heard you say something that I hadn't heard ever. Would you say that last line again that Super Dave was talking about? Aren't comedians supposed to be experts in off the cuff badinage? You know, the the the, the witty back and forth. What happened to that? Badinage is like Listen a badminton anyway. term. <laughs> I said, I, you weren't listening at the first part of the show when I did my repartee, badinage. Whatever the hell you're talking about. My badinage. About. But Norm, it was so funny. Norm, as a, like a real friend, you tried to explain to me in the studio. He's going like, it's like a badminton game. You know, It, it's like, it is a ter- badminton term originally. Yeah. Now, why didn't you say badminton? <laughs> yeah, Neil McDonald, uh, Norm's brother, why didn't you say badminton? Make it easy for us. No, badinage is a badminton term. A tournament. Yeah. Badinage. No, I'm, actually, uh, I'm actually funnier than Norman. He's just got the professional kit. Do you think that's why you haven't called each other back? Is that why there's some hatred there? <laughs> I was there? reluctant to come on this show because I'm going to get a lot of calls now, you know. Neil McDonald, Washington, D.C., Norm's older brother, called to win. I wish uh, Norm a happy birthday, didn't you? Although, you know what, Norm? I saw Bob Dole the other day. I, the, the guy that you, you know. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you did the great impression of. 
Uh, he was that was a compliment he just gave you. No, he, no, it was a great impression. Yes, it was a can, it was a great impression of Bob Dole that Norm did. Yeah. Norm is hysterical. I'm going to go to Zanies. How do I get there? All right, here's how you get to Zanies. <laughs> you go to Zanies. Uh, there, Super Day. Norm will be there. And Norm's brother Neil will be at a badminton event. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, say goodbye to Norm. Goodbye, Norm. Yeah, Say goodbye to Super Dave. Hey, Talk by the way, again in a few years. Wait a second now. See, what? Tell him you'll call him back. Uh, sure, man. I'll call. No, you won't. <laughs> of course. Will you? Yes. All right. Absolutely. Can I give Super Dave uh, Neil's number? Yeah. Oh, geez, don't don't do that. Not, what am I going to call Neil for? <laughs> <laughs> Neil. Neil, what am I going to do? I'm in a good mood. I don't <laughs> want to blow the whole thing. Neil, no, he can call me up and we can trade bars, you know? We're, we're at an all-time low in world opinion, and I'm going to call Neil to pep me up. <laughs> <laughs> he just said... Hey, Neil, how you doing? Now, what's your badminton term today? <laughs> what's your term of the day that I can take with me all day and pep me up? No, no, no. Call me anytime. I no, am going to I'm give gonna Super Dave... I'm giving you the number. He you know, said he Neil ought to be on match game. He said to match game. Neil ought Neil to be to on win. match game. Hey, he said, I'll by the way. I'll take Neil to win. <laughs> he said. He's a super what did blank. the cat say when it came out of the pet shop going meow? What did what? No, no, he's going to tell a joke now. Go ahead. <laughs> it's going to be good. Norm, uh, you know what? I don't know how you wound up funny. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I have no concept. You must have run away from home when you were three. Do <laughs> you have any other funny brothers and sisters? We get them all on the phone. We could destroy Brandmeier forever. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I want to hear the joke, man. Go ahead, no, Neil. Why. Come on, Super. Tell me the joke. Do you have a joke, Neil? Yeah, yeah. I want to hear it. No, he said, do you have a joke, Neil? No, I'm not telling Neil another joke. Neil no, would have to okay. pay me. All right, Neil. Yeah, I do, Neil, I do, I do. I got, I got one. Tuesday, yeah. come and pay him. Yeah, well, I got me. one. No, wait, priest, wait. The priest is checking into a, a hotel, and he says to the woman behind the counter, uh, I assume the porn channel in my room is disabled. And she says, uh, no, it's regular porn, you sick bastard. The, the comedy stylings of Neil McDonald, <laughs> Norm's older brother, Super Dave Osborne, blown off the map today by that. Wow. Hey, Super, let me hear you. I have joke. a joke. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Norm's got a joke. Wait a minute. Here we go. Go. Um, a dog walks into a um, telegraph office where they send, <laughs> they send telegrams, telegram office, right? And so the, the, the guy says, okay, what do you want your telegram to read? So the dog goes, uh, woof, woof, woof. Woof, 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 woof. And then the guy goes, oh, um, I noticed you have nine words. Uh, do you want to put an extra woof like it's for free? And then the dog goes, no, that wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> you know, you, I, I love Norm McDonald. You should have done that. I love him. Because he'll do that at the dinner table, too. <laughs> hey, here's one. A guy's having trouble with his wife, so he calls his best. Hey, Neil, are you off the phone? <laughs> <laughs> Neil, will you get off the phone so Super can tell this yeah, joke? I, I, I just finished writing down that great porn joke, Neil. <laughs> I won't have to put my finger in my mouth if I get sick to my stomach anymore. I told you I'm not okay, a professional. Here it is now. A guy a guy uh, calls a uh, guy uh, having trouble with his wife, so he calls his best friend. He said, "You got to meet me at a bar. I got to talk to you." So they go to a bar. He starts drinking. He drinks so much he throws up on his shirt. He says, "Now what am I going to do? I'm going to go home. She's going to scream and she's probably going to hit me." His friend says, "Don't worry about a thing. Tell her you had one drink. The guy next to you overdrank, got sick, and threw up on your shirt. And to prove it, he put ten dollars in your pocket to get it clean. I'm putting ten dollars right in there." He said, "You're brilliant." He goes home. He says, I'm home. She comes downstairs and starts screaming at him. He said, listen to me. I had one drink, but a guy at the bar got sick. Threw up on my shirt. At the proof, he put $10 in my pocket to get it clean. She reaches in. She says, there's $20 here. He says, I know. He also crapped in my pants. <laughs> Super Dave Osborne. <laughs> Super Dave Osborne. And... Norm McDonald in the studio and his fabulously funny brother, Neil McDonald, in Washington, D.C., award winning journalist. Neil. Okay, hey, and Norm, happy birthday. You're a great, you're the greatest. Wait, Good luck at Zanies, and I hope that we get together. Oh, you're going to hang up again. No, yeah, wait a minute. Wait a second. You know what Come I would on. love to do? I would love to do some more botanage. He's a great Canadian. Norm's a great Canadian. He'll probably be mad at me for saying that. Let's do some botanage. He's a great Canadian. What is botanage? Are Canadians supposed to be experts in off-the-cuff botanage? 
What did you say, Super? Who cares if he's a great Canadian? Oh, Super Dave worked in Canada. I worked for 12 years in Canada. I'm a great Canadian. Neil, that's a point you could answer. What uh, is the big deal if he is a good Canadian? What was he doing in Canada, running around in that weird flight suit? Like, Super Dave was working in Canada. I did Bizarre, which was the first series in the history of cable, and then I did Super Dave. Yeah, I was running around in that weird <laughs> flight suit, A-Wipe. <laughs> that's what I was doing. Is that his Arab name, A-Wipe? <laughs> you were sitting at home going, what? <laughs> what is that? Is why, why, why aren't I watching the Canadian news? <laughs> is that that's sounded like Rickles? I know. <laughs> while I while I'm you're at home, sorry. going. Arr. I'm sorry. I got hockey puck. While you're at home, I apologize. I said I'm sorry. He while said you're at home, sitting on a sitting with a rake, going. Bah. I said <laughs> I'm sorry. I know, okay? but Norm said that was very Ricklish that I you just said I'm sorry. He said, "What ne- do you want me to do?" Neil I got caught up. Oh. Let me explain something to you. Neil can bring things out of you you don't normally do. <laughs> That's right. That's okay? Right. Yeah. You know what, guys? If it... I was captured, I'd rather have bamboo under my fingernails than have Neil come in and talk to me. <laughs> no, I, I, if I was captured, I'd want to be in a room with Super Dave. I would. I just love this. <laughs> I, mean, no, I... I just think it's interesting that Neil worked in Washington. Yes. Uh, which was uh, uh, in the United States, while Super Dave worked in Canada. Isn't that interesting, Super? Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's quite an observation there, Norm. You, <laughs> you were both countries away from each other. While you, this is probably the way you're going to, that you're going to stay now, isn't it? I want to know why Norm told all those weird jokes at the Bob Saget roast. Like, what was going on there? Those were great jokes. Did you, you know, see? You th- don't understand your own brother. No, I. <laughs> Some, you I, don't understand your own brother. What jokes are we talking about? Now, the Bob has a beautiful face, like a flower. Yeah, cauliflower. <laughs> no offense, but... You know what's amazing? Yeah, what? I say something? May I say one thing? What is amazing about Johnny B, and I've always found this, you can, be, you can call him out of the blue, and all of a sudden, boom, there you are on some <laughs> show... I mean, he's, he, he's insane. <laughs> well, he brought it up. He brought up the roast. Are you, can I ask you a question? Are you still on the air? Do we call you at home? No, oh, I'm at my house. Oh, that's great. Oh, Norm, I didn't tell you this is where I live. <laughs> is this? Yeah, we're not, gonna, we're not even doing... You, you don't mind, right? No, this is fine, Okay, man. cool. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, you guys. We're not, on, we're not even going to be on the air. What pro- night are you going to be at Zany's? What night are you going to be at Zany's? Um, t- t- tonight and tomorrow <laughs> and Saturday. He's, I think he's still... And are you on the road now? When do you come home? I come home um, uh, in uh, 12 or 14 days, I think. Where do you go after Z? <laughs> I go... I'm going to be on Canadian television tonight. <laughs> oh, Almost what? like you don't care. No, we care. <laughs> we love Canada. We love it. What time are you going to be on, Neil McDonald, Norm's brother? 9 p.m. Eastern. 9 p.m. Eastern on Canadian? On the national. Are they on the Canadian national television? Yeah. Super, you got you got a satellite dish? Yeah, I got a satellite dish. <laughs> well, you might want to watch that. Yeah, I might. Yeah, you, you yeah, might want to. I really might. I might. There's a lot of things I might want to do. You know what well, I would I'm love? Gonna be, I'm going to be doing a piece on the economy there, Super. Oh, well, that ought to be, to be quick. <laughs> what are you going to say? It's not so bad. No, no, I'm going to say the you government. You know, this is worse government. than 1929, in case you're interested. No, I'm going to say I'm going to say that you know after after spending five years in this country being told that I'm from you know that I'm from a socialist nation I'm going to be I'm going to be talking about how the United States government is nationalizing banks and taking over companies and putting trillions of dollars of public money into bailouts nothing socialist about that right No, that's interesting. Now here's the thing: um, when I did my shows in Canada, the Canadian dollar was sixty three cents. And now it's more than the American dollar. You mean when you were just running around with that crazy suit on? <laughs> oh, you know what, Johnny B? What? That did it. What? No, wait a that minute. That did it. No. That was your farewell <laughs> thing to me, and that's it. I'm no, going now, come and on. I'm going to take my clothes no. off and play badminton. Neil's badmintage. Badmintage. No. Uh, Neil, Neil say goodbye to Super Dave. Neil's uh, say goodbye to Super Dave. All right, Super. Goodbye, Neil. Are you leaving? Nice talking to you, buddy. Are you going? Yeah, I'm going. He wants to. But we got to keep in touch, you and I. I think we're friends now. He wants to hear you hang up. What? He wants to hear you, Neil. He wants to hear you hang up. So go ahead. I'm not hanging up. No, Neil is. All right, Norm. Happy birthday, buddy. (laughs) Thanks, man. You too. Take it easy. By the way, do you remember your brother Neil? Five years. Yeah. He didn't even remember his brother Neil. His brother Neil. Norm McDonald, this is your life. (laughs) Wow. Oh man. Hey, super. 
What? You know, what's that one joke? What's that, that joke that uh, super about the bus driver and the, the that's one? That's the greatest. Wait, and I have another request, too. Okay, tell me the bus driver one, but then I have no, one that, more. That's a little rough right before uh, uh, Neil. Uh, no, but... Neil's gone now. Oh. Neil's gone now. All right, well, it's a, it's a rough joke. I mean, I, I'm not happy with it, but um, a bus driver, I, it's, 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 it's kind of visual. I'm not happy with it. He hasn't even told it yet. No. But it's visual. Norm McDonald in the studio, Super Dave Osborne on the line, and Neil McDonald, his brother, gone now. Okay, a, a, a bus driver's on a bus with a passenger in the back, and a woman gets on. And he looks at the woman. I can't woman. believe you're telling this joke. Uh-oh. I'm not going to tell it. I'm not telling it. <laughs> no, tell it. It's no, great wait joke. a minute. There's no, no I'm way. It. I'm no, you it. must tell this joke no, no, now. I can't. Yes. No, no, no. It's just, it's a little rough. Just give, we'll, we'll work around it. No, we can't. I, 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 I'm there's happy no, with what Neil did. Wait, I don't want to spoil it. it. Okay, no, wait. Norm, Norm shaking his head. Well, I'm yes. just saying there's no bad language in it at all. So, no, there's no yeah, bad language, yeah. but the thought of it is not too good at all the right, let's just go. Let's just try to go so forward I, with I, it. I think I'll save this for the next time Neil calls. No, no we can't. Yeah, that will never no, happen. I'm sorry. He was doing it, and I interrupted. I shouldn't have. No, we, we, this, we want to hear. He was doing the joke. I let's made hear. a mistake. Uh, let's talk about match game. No, 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 no. I don't want. I want. Come on, right now, new Super Dave. Let's hear yeah. the job. Come on, Super I'm gonna pump the yeah. job. Super hey, everybody, who wants to hear yeah. Super Dave? Yeah, 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 yeah me too. Yeah, yeah Super yeah, Dave. Super yeah. Dave. Yeah. It's time for Super yeah. Dave. Tell Excellent. us the joke, Super Dave. <laughs> Come on, be like, get us. We're excited now. No, no, no. I've given you enough today that will last you a lifetime for I'm my not birthday. With that. But wait, no. Hear what Norm said. Why? Wait. Want to know why? Super. What? He said for his birthday, he requests the bus I joke. I will call him later and give him the joke. I'm not doing it on the air please. because I find it at this time offensive. Thank please, you. Please, please, Super no, Dave, I please. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. Why? It's a great one, though. It's a guy on a bus so far. That's no, what I'm I got. I'm not doing it. I ain't doing it. Okay, there's a guy on a bus. I'm not doing Norm, it. Norm, you do it then. I, I can't remember. That's the problem or I would do it. No, that ne- you remember it. <laughs> Come on. You remember it. That ain't going to work. Give us a hint. Okay, uh, I'll tell you what. Tell you what. How about this? How about what? if Norm goes first with another request I have because it's October, it's Halloween time. Tell that pumpkin joke. <laughs> okay, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. You the, tell the, the pumpkin joke? Yeah, you told the pumpkin joke once to me, and hey, I you know, Norm I still don't greatest, get it. Was Norm the, listen to me. Was Norm the greatest guy on Saturday Night Live with the news ever? I, okay, I will tell you, without oh. question, the greatest guy that ever did SNL. Oh, I know the joke. You, tell the joke. The guy that has the wishes. Yes. 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 Yeah. Tell that joke. Oh, man. How did that go? He has all, He has these, he gets, he, he, the genie comes to him and says, you have, uh, oh, no, no. <laughs> See, Super Dave? He's a trying guy's at walking least. around. Right, I'll tell you a joke. A guy's walking around with a pumpkin. Well, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait, wait. Super, I got it now. Super, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Super, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Super, <laughs> look. go ahead. There's a black man, a Jewish man, a Mexican man, and a bigot. And the black man reaches out of the park bench. There's an old lamp, and he rubs it, and a genie pops out. She says, oh, my God. I've been in there for 2,000 years. I'll grant each one of you any wish you want. And the black man said, I would like all the black people to be able to go live in Africa and the beauty of that land in peace and harmony and wealth and have no problems. Boom. Gone. Says to the Mexican gentleman, you're next. He said, I would like the same thing. I would like all the Mexicans to be able to go to Mexico and live in the beauty of that land without peace. Boom. You got it. You're next. And who's the other one? It was a uh, oh, Jewish gentleman. Jewish I would yes. like all the Jews to be able to go to Israel. And live in the beauty of that land. Same way. Boom, you got it. She said, she said, let me get this straight. All the Jews in Israel, all the black people are in Africa, all the Mexicans are in Mexico. She said, yes. He said, all of a Diet Coke. <laughs> it's Super Dave Osborne. Super Dave Osborne. Yeah. Hey, wait a okay. minute. Wait, tell me the pumpkin joke. So now. the guy has a pumpkin head, and his friend goes, what, what happened to your head? It's a giant pumpkin. And then the guy goes, well, because I met a genie, and he came up to me. Are you listening? I'm listening. You super? <laughs> he came up to me, the genie, and he said, or I rubbed the lamp, and a genie came out. And then the, ge- <laughs> the genie said, you have three wishes. So the guy goes, hey. Um, um, he goes, so I told the genie my first wish was to have all the money in the world, you know, a million dollars. And so the genie gave me a million dollars. 
And then he, he says, what's your second wish? The genie said to the guy. And then the guy said, oh, I want a, a beautiful woman to be to make love with. And then, uh, the, so the genie gives him that. And so then uh, he says, uh, <laughs> what'd you do for your third wish? He goes, that's where I really screwed it up. I, I wish for a giant pumpkin head. <laughs> See what he means, Super Dave? That's how you tell a joke. You tell a joke like that. There he is once again, Norm McDonald. Super, that's how. Super Dave Osborne. Tell Norm happy birthday. Tell Norm happy birthday. Can you believe that's the craziest line I've ever heard from a man? I mean, I got to be honest with you. I've never heard a man say this. Aren't comedians supposed to be experts in off the cuff badinage? That's the craziest line I've ever heard a man speak in ever my whole in life. My life. Ever in my life, except in an institution. <laughs> no, I've never. Yes, if you were walking around, if you were walking around staring at the floor, and this guy said one thing a day, <laughs> and that's what he said. You know, but the weirdest thing was the way Norm, he says it, right? Aren't he goes, comedians supposed to be experts in off-the-cuff badinage? And then Norm looks at me completely seriously with not a smile on your face, Norm, and you go like this. Oh, it's like badminton. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> well, it's, it's ba- it means back and forth. Yeah. To explain it. Yeah, t- I'm looking people, at him like... People are jumping overboard, and he's trying to explain The badinage. I, I, like, I couldn't believe you were, you were like, so calmly going, oh, yeah. If you were with Neil on a balloon trip over France. (laughs) Hey, Neil, look at that. (laughs) Goodbye, Neil. I would shove your brother over. No offense, but I would shove your brother out of a balloon. Uh, He's a good man. He seems like a good man. He's a good man. He's a good man. Hey, Super, you and his brother got to get together, spend some time together, and really. definitely going to do that. You should pitch a show to somebody. I think you got a lot of camaraderie there. We could do it, the three of us. The Batnaz show. And and you know what? Neil would say one thing a day. It would be Neil's moment. <laughs> it's time now for Neil's moment. Here he is now. Aren't comedians supposed to be experts in off the cuff Batnaz? Uh, there it is. Neil's moment. Don't forget the Batnaz show. That'll be all over the uh, YouTube. Oh, yes, that'll be hot. Uh, say happy birthday to Norm now. Happy birthday. Berta says happy birthday. Teddy says happy birthday. And. Lori Joe says happy birthday, and we hope to see you soon, but we know we won't because we'll call and you won't return our call. You better return his what? call, Norm. Yeah, why don't we have a, a, a go to dinner? Yeah. yeah. But that's what I say, and then all I get is that stupid. You like steak? Leave a, mess, leave a message. How about a, you like steak, right? Yeah, well, where do you want to go? Houston's? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Go to Houston's in Century City Plaza. Yeah, you know that Houston. Sure, yeah, that's where you you go. Did you hear what Johnny B just said? That's exactly where we're going. That's when you got to go. To go to the one in Century City Plaza. No, that's where we've gone before. That's why I'm so amazed that you said that. Me, whenever me and Super Dave get together, we get together at the Century City. That's where we go. But aren't you amazed that Johnny B just said that? No, Johnny B never. I mean, he does things that amaze me all the time. Do you I know? Wish he was back on the air. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Super, because they have great food at that Houston. Oh, my God, yeah. That's Artichoke good food. Artichoke dip. Artichoke dip. There yeah. you go. Hey, Super, can you, when you guys go, can I go with you guys? You know how much fun that would be. Oh, man, but ne- Neil's got to come, though. Really? Neil, Neil will wait on us. Neil will wait on us. How would you like to have Neil as your waiter? <laughs> I'll have steak. I wouldn't. <laughs> I'll have steak. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. Super Dave Osborne and Norm McDonald appearing happy at birthday, Houston's. And Norm, wish Neil a happy birthday if he has one. Okay? Wait. All right, listen, guys. we got to move along. I want to tell Are we moving along? Yeah, we're moving along. we got to go. <laughs> you know what, Johnny? Your show is as great as ever, and I'll call in in another five years. <laughs> as always, the great, lovely Norm, Super birthday, Dave. Man. Have a great time at Zany's. Yeah, we'll see you soon, baby. Okay. Super. When are you going to come to Chicago? Norm's come and visited me. I am coming in about a week. <laughs> you are such a liar. <laughs> He's the most hermetic guy ever, Super Dave. Now, you know you what? can't get him out of his house. See that? You hear that, Super? You're saying he doesn't call. He says he can't get you out of the house. Who's telling the truth here? That's not true. Can uh, I tell you a quick story? If you don't tell me that bus joke, one of these days, I'm going to bother you. This I'm going to call you every week. true story. Go Can ahead. Tell it, please? Yes. Norm was in Vegas. He was performing. This was a few years ago. So 
we went there. I went there, and we played golf. And Lori Joe, Norm's assistant, had a little dog. My producer. Her producer. I'm very sorry. Well, I'm not demeaning her. I love her. <laughs> oh, okay. Boy, are you going to stop this story cold? <laughs> no, no. I'm just My saying. My producer, and it's Lori Joe, not Lori Joe. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah. I am telling you the truth. We were playing Shadow Creek. Yes. And they gave Norm a huge suite. So we went down to gamble. As Norm, I don't know if he does it anymore, but occasionally he would like to place a bet on things. And when we came back up, we opened the door to the suite, and it looked like seven rock and rollers had been there for a week. (laughs) The dog had completely destroyed the drapes, the wooden walls, everything. That's a true story. Yeah. What? Well, uh, well, this is you're talking about Larry Joe's dog. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I said. And then, but you're forgetting that then the dog escaped. Yeah, and it was downstairs in the jail with people. It was in a jail. It was in a jail. And it traumatized gypsies. Yeah. <laughs> it did traumatize gypsies. Traumatized like, gypsies? Yeah, they tried to sue. I haven't heard the word gypsies mentioned in the last 20 years either. I know there were gypsies on the same floor that there we were, were on. Gypsies. Listen to what you're way. saying. When was the last time anyone said the word gypsies? Right. Uh, I don't know. Come on. Who says? No, hey, I don't what? Know. No one says gypsies. Well, hey, listen, that's because you don't hang around at the edge of town. Watch out for the gypsies. Here come the gypsies. The hey, you know what? Yes. God bless all of you. The God gy- bless. God bless. Now, hopefully we get out of this crisis soon. No, listen, Super Dave. Yeah. Speaking of Lori Joe, she is right now in uh, listening. Uh, to Johnny B, because the whole Hookster family loves uh, Johnny B, out in Kankakee. Kankakee, Illinois! It's actually St. Anne. How about Anne. that, Super Dave? I got S- listeners in Kankakee, Illinois. Actually, St. Anne. St. Anne, Illinois. How great is that? That's fantastic. Super Dave, I'm getting That's yelled at right story. now. Now I'm going to hang up on you. <laughs> yeah, I would too. Hey, Super, if you don't tell me that bus joke before I die, I will kill you myself. I will tell it to you, and I'll call you in five years, and we'll have a big birthday. Super, can we make one bet on the air right now, or one sort of declaration? When I die, I would like you to give me the bus joke over my grave. I will put the bus joke in your grave. Oh, thank you. All right? Oh, I will put a recording of it in your grave. Hey, watch out for gypsies. Careful, careful for those gypsies. <laughs> gypsies. Remember badminton for everybody. <laughs> watch out for badminton playing gypsies. They will right, kill you. And, and, and you can see uh, uh, Neil tonight at Not So Funny. <laughs> Neil McDonald, Norm's brother, performing at Not So Funnies in Canada. <laughs> Super Dave, I'm hanging up on you. Hey, Super Dave. Uh, yeah. No, no. You have you. You, I, you tell him he has to go. <laughs> no, no. I was just going to say because he said Not So Funnies. Uh, this uh, comedian George Miller used to have this joke. <laughs> you know George Miller? No, yeah. Yes, of course. Uh, and he said, uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, I just played. Uh, he goes, there's a great club in New York, Catch a Rising Star. I played that one. That was a great club. Not as good as the one I'm playing next week across the street. Snub a bombing has been. <laughs> there it is. All right. Now we're bringing George Miller into this. Oh, my good Lord. Super Dave. I like, I like Not So Funny better. Oh, uh, Not So Funny. I have to because tell. Not So Funny goes with Zany. Right. It's very <laughs> Zany's not so funny. <laughs> All right, Super Dave, thank you very much. You'd only have one person on the bill, and it would be Neil. <laughs> Performing tonight. Neil as... is the only comic in the United States who opens for himself. Here he is again in Not So Funny. He's the headliner, Neil McDonald. Here he Neil is. Neil McDonald. Here he is. Come, come on out. Come on out. Talk about the economy. Come on out, Neil. Aren't comedians supposed to be experts in off-the-cuff badinage? <laughs> All right, there it is. <laughs> 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 I know. Goodbye. That's just uh, like this. You know what that is? That's his take my wife, please. <laughs> That's his Henry Youngman esque moment. <laughs> Goodbye, Super Dave. You need to hear the history to see the future. The Brenmeyer Archives. Good morning. Doesn't it seem like sometime we could talk all day?